McNulty? Here. Amy Carroll? Here. George Blauville? Here. Todd Lavieri? Here. Chris Labrie? Here. Good. Michael Chen, are you here? Here. Yep, okay. Uh, Maria Weingarten? Here. Rob Hommel? Here. And Victor Alvarez? Here. And our first selectman, Kevin Moynihan, is here, all present. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Okay, let's just, um, one motion to please approve the minutes of the meeting on February 9th and February 11th, please. Can I have a motion to approve? Move. Neil, second? I'll second. George, great, thanks. All in favor, aye, raise your hands. Aye. Opposed, none. Okay, so move. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, I don't see. I see. We've got Katrina. Okay, and Katrina's on. I didn't see Brian. I may have missed him. So I'm just talking. Oh, he's on. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, so if, if Brian and Katrina and, uh, and, and Dr. Keating are on, I think we can go right over to the um, Board of Education Capital follow-up. We, we, um, we had a great meeting, obviously, two, two weeks ago, and we just want to do the follow-up on capital. Um, just to have it said, George, you want to do a little intro just from the Board of Finance uh, side in terms of the um, of just all the work and feedback so far? Sure. Um, at the last Board of Finance meeting, Neil and I had asked the Board of Ed and School Administration to help us better understand how projects are made um, and make it into the BOE's capital ask and what the process was for timing, costing, and managing them. So we developed a set of uh, what were essentially process questions and asked, uh, uh, well, and asked Brian and Joanne to respond. Um, and at least my takeaways from, the, uh, from that discussion, um, and, and I hope they're the same takeaways that the Board of Ed and, and Dr. Letzi will have, uh, are a couple of points. One, the BOE's process uh, for capital uh, managing capital asset projects, as described by them, is pretty robust. Um, we think the Selectman Advisory Committee for Buildings and Infrastructure that Neil and I are both on uh, provide uh, a good forum to discuss both the town and school capital projects, and we want to build on that moving forward so that we have a better uh, sense of coordination. But even though the B B Board of Ed has a clear internal building maintenance and management process. We want to augment that with an external linkage. Uh, we haven't developed it yet. We're not quite sure what that would look like, but we definitely think we need to have an external linkage that can provide a level of heads up involvement uh, by the appropriate areas of the town expertise before projects are green lighted and monies are committed. As we said, when we talked to them this afternoon, we don't wanna make the school administration or BOE jobs more challenging than they already are. Uh, however, there is a need for us to be more cognizant of their capital activities so that we can be better partners, and that's going to entail developing some infrastructure. So that's basically where we are. We did not, uh, we did not attempt to, to review and approve any of the capital requests because that's clearly only the Board of Finance, and that's what tonight's meeting is all about. Good. Okay. Okay, I think with that... Um... Ryan or Joanne, you've got the controls if you want to, I don't know if you wanted to just go to, to the uh, capital pages in the Board of Ed deck, that'd be a good place to start or however you want to go. Okay, I'd be happy to share the, the pages in the capital there and just take a quick walk through and be glad to stop for any questions or conversation along the way. I know we, Perfect. in our meeting last, was it about a week and a half, two weeks ago, we spent quite a bit of, of time on the operating and uh, we're running out of steam a little bit when we hit the capital. So uh, a good place, I think, to pick up. So thank you for that time. Uh, and George, thank you for that, that summary of our conversation. Um, completely um, agree with the, you know, creating opportunities for communication and consultation along the way. And uh, I think, you know, some of the ideas around the Selectman's Advisory Committee and other things are uh, certainly great opportunities for us to talk further and get some things going. So um, how about if I share and if um, Dr. Keating or Dan, or if you would like me to, however you'd like to do it, uh, we can sort of talk through a couple of the highlights if you like. Sure. So um, the engineering services component of our budget request 
Um, 100,000 of it has to do with the high school um, roof replacement project. So we can make a decision, uh, you know, as we mentioned this afternoon, talk with Lunda to see what the preference is. Do we build that $100,000 into the bonded capital for that project or do we um, budget for it separately? So that's a separate issue that we can talk about later, but that, that really is to support the re-roofing project at the high school. The engineering services general uh, really deal with our boiler plant replacement projects that we have, and we'll go over them shortly. And then the en energy conservation um, engineering services deal with the CHP programs uh, primarily at the high school. So as we move down each year, you do see painting requests that go um, for each of our schools. We've been really um, optimizing those funds for the last several years to freshen up buildings, uh, the buildings that really needed to have those funds um, after many years of not having painting funds. And so we continue to ask for those funds. We do see that sun setting in the, in the next few years and um, we could probably do an assessment. Well, we will do an assessment at the end of this um, budget year to determine uh, what is expected for the future in, in terms of a five-year project. We have put in um, here for the um, repaving of the parking lot at East. That's a project that was put off last year. We had, of course, the roof replacement project. We had some underground water uh, projects that were completed uh, where we um, uh, bend, uh, uh, directed the water off the site. So now we're in a position where we can uh, finish up the repaving project. And you're gonna see in a few of the schools, we do have funds put aside or requested. These are new funds and they're based on a very recent assessment of our public address system um, to upgrade those systems. Um, two things on this, um, it is a safety issue for our schools. Of course, this is how we communicate out in mass, but it's also um, costing us significant close to 50,000 a year in repairs of very antiquated systems. So something to think about. If we move down to south, um, we have some repairs there. Painting again, um, the stairway repair, we put Tiger Public Works um, next to the items that we would uh, be collaborating on those items. We would like to uh, request moving forward with the boiler plant. There's two boilers at south that are in need, and I wouldn't say desperate need, but in very much need of being replaced um, this year. And the $350,000 um, estimate for those came out of a recent study that was completed by Van Zelm um, to update our five-year plan. And really it comes in line with um, a recent bid that we just got in for phase two from SACS for replacing boilers two and three at that school. West we have paint, uh, painting and the parking lot renovation um, at West is desperately needed, but we do understand that uh, if gas is to come into that school, that this would be delayed. And we just ask that it be adequately patched in order to um, provide a safe environment for people who are walking in the parking lot. As you move up, um, we are completing uh, phase one of the cogen plant at Sachs um, later this spring into the summer. And that involves one uh, 75 kilowatt um, generator for that school, but it has been designed to accept a second uh, generator into that facility to maximize um, the potential for savings and um, cleaner um, energy for that school. The phase two of the boiler project is two boilers as opposed to one in phase one. So that would take place this summer. We have bids already and that is a a bidded number that you see before you. And those projects, um, those boilers are integral to operating the building and in need of replacement at this time. So our boiler replacements would occur this summer at Sachs and South School. Of course, there's painting at uh, both the Sachs and the high school. Our biggest project right now is the roof replacement project at the high school. And just to talk a little bit about that, uh, the roof replacement project at um, the high school has been accelerated due to the condition of the facility. 
we are currently out to bid on that project um, after many months of research study between our consultant who designed the, the building and our structural engineer. We do believe that this price um, will come down. We had a, a number of 7 million over two years. Uh, current estimates based on um, our, our research right now is between four and $5 million for the project. It may be completed over one year or over two years. We're out to bid right now with both um, options. And so we will have numbers for the town council prior to them adopting the budget as to uh, what the final uh, bid results, qualified bid results are. We also have the repaving, the final repaving of uh, the high school last year. A significant investment was made for parking and that was done. We, have a, we had a great project in front of the school and this yeah. would uh, finish off the, the back of the school. And as we have in prior years, we have asked for so the replacement of our special education vehicles. This is on a cycle. The wheelchair van would be the last of the wheelchair vans that we would replace um, for the foreseeable future. Uh, the two vehicles on special ed are in the cycle to be replaced. And then finally, um, if you take a look down to the technology uh, lease program that we've had in place, um, this represents an annual spend of approximately $600,000. And um, I would just say to you that this past year, this particular vehicle having been put in place um, many years ago, uh, really was instrumental in our ability to move forward with remote learning. Without this um, ability to replace and go one-to-one -one K-8 and leverage all of our purchasing and our existing equipment, um, I don't think it would have been possible. So this just turned out to be um, really a blessing for us. And uh, we would like to continue. Uh, we have a replacement cycle that we would like to catch up on because we did have to purchase additional one-to-one -one, um, devices to enable remote learning uh, into last year and into this year. And so this is again, following the, um, the plan that we've had for many years. Happy to take any questions. It's Todd. Let me just ask a quick question back on the roof on the new, mm -hmm. on the high school. I think this was 50% of the $7 million placeholder, right, from the prior study. Why right. would we now, if the range is four to five, why wouldn't we use 50% of, of the new range, either the midpoint or even the high end, take half of five million, put two and a half here instead of three and a half? Yeah, if it makes to, it sense to do it over a two-year period, um, that would make a lot of sense uh, to do it that way. We're gonna be getting the bids in in another few weeks, it's three weeks, we'll have them um, vetted out and we'll make a decision. You know, our consultant really does feel like the two-year plan makes more sense than a one-year plan uh, okay. based on the fact that you want to have, um, you know, you wanna complete that roof section within the time frame of the summer. It's right. 150,000 square feet, you know, half of that is 75,000. And that's basically what we've been doing at East and South, they're approximately 80,000. So it's very um, close to, you know, what we've been able to successfully achieve. And that's what he's, you know, he's basically advising us, but we wanted to get the pricing back because if it's a significant benefit to the town financially, and we can make it work in here by, you know, working with our operations and uh, figuring out a way to make it work if kids are in session, then we want at the town, you know, we want to have that option. I'm not sure if I'm, I mean, I understand all that, but it says phase one. So I'm assuming that was in, intended to be over the two years. So if it's over the two years, shouldn't we be using the $5 million number? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, our initial plan was right. to do it over um, a few years. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, when, when we vote on it next Thursday to send over to the town council, it would be better if that were, I think, two and a half, half of five, not half of seven. Right. Uh -huh. And I do think that, you know, if we do get some very competitive bidding in for a one-year project and it makes sense, we'll bring it back to the boards yeah, and say yeah. yay or nay. Perfect. Perfect. Of course. Yep. Okay. So, Joanne, I, I have not a gotcha question, just, um, um, just a question. 
if the roof project's already out for bid and you're expecting prices back fairly soon, mm -hmm. why, why is there still $100,000 for engineering services for the design uh, for the replacement of the high school roof? So that's not really design related, that's project management related. Oh. So um, that's what we would be paying our, you know, the consultant to oversee mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. actual construction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll talk with Lunda if it makes sense to bundle that into the bond, mm -hmm. um, then, then we would do that. We've done that in the past. Okay. But that's, that's a price that is, um, in addition to the projections for the actual roof mm -hmm. project. So I wanted, you know, I wanted to be transparent with mm -hmm. that. Okay, thank you. Joanne? Uh, Joanne, could I ask yeah. a question? Uh, and I sure. think you touched on this. Um, in terms of the scale of this project, because I did, you know, after the last meeting, I drove by to see how big this roof was. And you mentioned um, that, I think you said it was um, 150. So, right thousand square feet and did you say that east and south were both like 80 i'm, I'm just trying right. to get the, the scale yeah so um and i know those were a couple of years ago so are, is this pricing kind of a square foot thing in line with what it costs to do a flat roof at east and south or do they have other considerations i mean just in just in terms of understanding the 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 size of it and why you know it's such a, a big number um right so um so the original pricing came in in FY15. Mm -hmm. It was before 15, maybe late 14, early 15. And the price for uh, petroleum was much higher back then. If you, you probably recall that, we all paid a lot more at the gas pumps back then. And I, what's happened over the years is actually the cost of re-roofing has decreased. And we saw that at both east and south. So... Um, when our consultant put these pricing together, the pricing together, it wasn't based on east and south. It was based on uh, current pricing. Okay. Now we've had a ripple last week down in Texas with the with what happened down in Texas with the weather and everything and, and the tragedy down there, and that's impacting you know our prices at the pump right now slightly. And we're you know we're a little concerned about that. Not um, it's not a long range problem, but it could have an impact. But um, at the end of the day, he did price out the revised budget, four to five million on the design. So it's very design specific um, as any other building project. And, and you were involved with the um, sex edition. So I know that you understand that. Okay. So it's based on the work that needs to be done um, rather than an estimate back from 2014-15. And just one other question, and again, you guys have done all the study on this, but just those of us who kind of, you know, are, are tourists in this area. Um, and I know they, they may give you a price for the whole project <clears throat> or half the project. So since we're moving this up uh, a year because of uh, the state of the capital plan, uh, it's still okay to do half of it a year from now? I'm just trying to understand. I mean, is, it, is there a benefit to the structure uh, and I know you're trying to work around kids there, but is there a benefit to the structure to getting it all done? Is it so there's pros and cons to both options. Um, and the fact of the matter is if we do it in one summer, we're going to literally have two, you know, the same contractor, but two different crews doing, there's two roof systems. There's the old roof, um, the old building and the new building, so to speak. Combined, there's 30 um, roof systems. But in each of the two sections, those roof sections are very integrated. So that's one of the, the reasons why doing it over three years didn't make a lot of sense because the continuity of the roofs and how they connect one another um, makes sense to do them in one fell swoop. So it's, it's, a, it's either a one-year project or a two-year project. The, the thing, if it does, it is a one-year project, we're going to have to have two different crews working on the roof at the same time, which in and of itself may not be a bad thing, but the quality of the work and the oversight of the work um, needs to be extra vigilant in that type of situation. Um, if we do it over two summers, it's with the same contractor, 
it's more than likely that we can ask for the same crew like we did at South. We had a very successful project at South with our contractor. They were the lowest qualified bidder. They happened to be the lowest qualified bidder at East. We asked for the exact same crew to come in and, and the workmanship and the job that they did and the supervision was very high quality. So that's kind of what we need to balance. It's gonna depend on who, who comes in with the bids and where they land and you know what the decision points are um, and we'll, we'll in, the, have, in the east, the people who did the, uh, the work at East, assuming their bids came in positively, they don't have enough crew to do the whole thing. Is that? The, well, it's not the same crew because they just yeah. couldn't do it in the time frame. They'd okay. have to literally have two different crews meeting kind of in the middle. And, um, you know, we kind of handpicked <clears throat> the crew that we had out of them based on a lot of research and interview of the, um, the staff. Thank you. The questions on capital. Tucker, help me if there's someone has their hand raised. I'm sort of flipping through here. Yeah, I have a question. So you have the uh, the boiler replacement in South, and you um, is there any reason why you're not doing a CHP project in South? I would imagine that a CHP project could re could be done instead of a boiler replacement. Is that correct? Um, not in the case of South. South is, uh, we had a massive um, solar project completed there a year and a half ago, which takes up about 80% of the load. It's the biggest load that we have uh, for any of our um, elementary schools. So it's covering 80% of the load. So the cost effectiveness of a CHP, which is probably one of the most costly energy conservation um, you know, applications, um, would not have a payback, would not be um, financially viable as a project to pick up the heating load, which is a, you know, around 40,000 a year um, for a $500,000, $600,000 heating uh, CHP plant. And we wouldn't have as much need for um, the electrical output. So we had that studied and we, we really decided the focus is SACS, the high school, and potentially, potentially the other two elementaries. Okay, thank you. Todd, I'll just share briefly that as you scroll through the budget book itself on the next pages, there are some just one or two sentence explanations of, right. of the right. items that are in there. And then as you go a little bit further, you'll see the five-year plan. And I know that part of our conversation today uh, was about kind of having some more conversations with the five-year plan in hand with the uh, superintendent's advice. Uh, I keep doing that. I'm sorry, the selectmen's advisory group. Um, the uh, So just for... You know, for folks to take a look to see the planning and the continuum of work. Any questions from the board? Any more questions? Just one other question on the technology services. I see that it's going down as time goes on. Um, is there, where are those savings coming from? Is that in the operating budget? No, in the capital budget, the technology services, it's about 625,000 a year in 2022, and it's going down to 600,000 over the uh, five-year period. Yeah, it, it, it basically it relates to the interest rates. These are four-year lease programs that we enter into and it's turned over. Um, we, we basically have a model that on average, we turn over technology every four years. So it really is a function of the interest rates. Okay, any other questions going once? Chris, George, anything else? <coughs> your perspective on the committee? No? I, I have a real quick question on technology. Um, Considering um, everything you guys had to do for, to prep for COVID, and thank God we had the technology in place, was there any advanced buy of some of the technology 
that would lighten what's needed next year in terms of hard, you know, whatever you buy. So, so we have, um, <coughs> so, you know, getting technology this past year has been painful. <laughs> it's been very difficult because of the backlog of Chromebooks. Um, the Apple, the iPads have been fairly uh, reliable, but the, um, the Chromebooks, which we use pretty much three through eight, um, have been difficult. So we, we have received in all of our shipments um, just recently, the last shipment um, from last year's spend. So we were able to start, we started looking um, about a month ago out into the market to see what was available. And I worked with Lunda and of course, Brian, um, we were able to capture um, several hundred units that were in the pipeline in the US. Uh, the problem was getting any units to be delivered that were actually here in the US, uh, but they were, we located um, the units, I think there's 450 or 60. Um, in a warehouse and we were able to get our vendor off the state bid to bring them into their warehouse in, uh, in um, Massachusetts. And we've basically given them um, a purchase order, a pending funding uh, for those units. So we will start next school year with all the units that we need on the Chromebook side for our students. So just to also, uh, I think address part of the question too, so what we've had to do is uh, suspend our, some of our replacement programs. So for instance, our uh, smart boards are failing. You know, they're, they're, some of them are well past their useful life and we're looking at a, a new um, projection type system or you know, new monitor mm -hmm. system. We've had to, we had to suspend those replacements in order to you know, use the resources to get our, to shift our model, right? So we shifted from a shared device model to a, a one-to-one -one model for our K-12 students. Actually K-8 because 9-12 is bring your own. Okay. So Todd, the only thing I can, I can think about that we talked about at last month's meeting, are we uh, still exploring moving the actual budget items into the town's budget? So that doesn't, it doesn't become part of the Board of Ed's budget, although they still have to manage it and have to run it. Can you say that again? Uh, last month we were, I think we talked about, does it make sense to move the capital budget for the Board of Ed out of the Board of Ed's budget and into the town's budget? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that's where we're going. I okay. don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. Um, in fact, we talked about even having an MOU and, and after having all the conversations that we had, um, I think the thing for this, for the Board of Finance, we're not going to vote on tonight, but to consider is just let's, let's leverage the groups that we have now. We've got the Selectman's Advisory Committee. We've got the Resources Committee that we're on, and we work together from a liaison point of view and so forth. Capital, I just suggest we maybe keep leveraging those, learn a little bit more about how to leverage those better, and then, you know, add a little, call it governance or a little just structure to bring some for lack of a better phrase, a checklist of the things we want to make sure we've addressed. So we didn't forget Tiger, or we didn't forget this, or we didn't forget that, or whatever that may be. That that feels like a using the process that's working today with just a little formality around it, just because players come and go, and it's good to have a little of that um, structure, but but not necessarily go to the extent of having the NMOU. I think that's where we're. I would say that's kind of what the what we felt like today after our conversation with uh, with uh, the board of bed on capital, but. Um, just speaking out loud with everybody, we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out going forward, but it feels like the mechanics are in place for this to work as, as is, um, but no, we're not, I don't know that we'd, there's any benefit of moving it on to the capital. It's the towns, right. the taxpayers are paying for it now. I mean, the, the board of ed capital expense this past year was I think one to check me $7 million, right? I mean, so it's not an insignificant expense for the town but I think it's well managed. In fact, this capital request is less than our expense, which is would mean the debt would go down. Now we'll know, uh, we'll see how it all plays out. And with this, uh, this new roof information it might even be better. So um, I think that's- Okay. That's Just the correct thinking with at least the way I'm reacting to what we're seeing. If you guys have other ideas and thoughts while we have the board of that on, we could, in the administration, we could talk about it. No, I think as long as we can move forward with some kind of light touch coordinating structure, then it doesn't matter where we put the, where we put the numbers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Any other thoughts, Tom or Neil? Neil's that kind of a good reflection of, of uh, where your head is now. I think I think the Slegman's Advisory Committee is is working well. And let's uh, you're on mute. You're on mute if you're. Still on mute. Neil, you're still on mute. Sorry. I think one of the things we want to avoid is tons of MOUs and lots of documentation. And just like you said, Todd, so I, you know, I think whether it's going to be a check the box or uh, a, a selectman's uh, advisory committee approval or an MOU, well, that's where I think the light touch you're talking about, George, makes a lot of sense. We'll, te we'll test it. You know, everyone's got the same goal, which is better communication. So that's a good thing. Well, everyone's moving at 100 miles an hour and juggling a million things too. So having a little of that around it helps make sure there's a wrapper um, to act as a checkpoint. Tom or anybody else, any other thoughts? No, I, that all sounded you know, consistent with what gave rise to the idea of an MOU in the first place. Just putting a little bit of coordination around it, I would have thought out of the box, the task would have been simply to describe what we're doing currently, since so much of it seems to work just fine either by experience or in hindsight, looking back on it, we all seem to have done anywhere from a reasonably good to an excellent job on, on almost all of this stuff. And so, but the idea is if we put a little bit of structure around it, and again, making sure that we know that it's more of a light touch, it would just do a very good job, I think, that structure, you know, kind of making people be able to understand what the expectation is. So if the players change or in the middle of something, we need to jump on a decision very quickly, we all kind of have an idea of where we are, what's been involved to date, so we can respond in due course. So good. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, we don't need to hold you any longer, Brian or Joanne. Unless anyone has another question, I think we're good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you have a good night. Thanks. Okay. Thank Next you. item on the agenda is public works. So, oh shoot! I had a question for Brian before he left. Darn it! I, uh, Katrina, are you still on? Could just Brian didn't leave yet. That's okay. Sorry, I made it. Sorry, real quick question, and and I don't know if if Bill Osterman's on. Is Bill on? Should be. I saw. Yeah, I'm here. I, I, I saw a disturbing email from you. <laughs> Sorry. That I'm in shock. So my understanding is that there's. I'm going to paraphrase, so correct me if I got this wrong. And, and again, Brian and, and Linda and, and, and uh, uh, Katrina, you may know that we're not eligible for FEMA because we had our schools open. Is that the nut of what you said? Well, well, with the new ministry, <clears throat> last year they weren't covering uh, most of the school expenses for reopening. And uh, the Biden administration came in and they um, changed it but they're only going to uh, do 100% funding from January 2021 to September 2021. So they're not covering everything we spent last year to have our schools ready. Um, I talked to FEMA today. There's a lot of argument going on down there. And I know Kevin's been on with, I think, the senators and state here. Uh, we're arguing it. And um, I think right now, from my understanding, is they're uh, looking at all the different um, items that were needed to open a school and breaking it down. And right now their discussion is, um, we think they're gonna cover the PPE equipment last year at 100%. Um, and then we're trying to see more, how much more we can get covered. Um, nothing's uh, in writing yet. Um, our current application is being on hold because of the changes down there. They don't want me to have to refile a second one for quarters one and two of last calendar year. And uh, so calendar uh, quarter three or four of last year is the one that has the most expensive. Um, obviously that was over the summer. We're working on it. I don't know where it's going to end up, but we are working on it. Linda, do you have a full accounting? And again, not, it's not on the agenda. We're not going to go into details today, but could just as a follow-up, maybe for Thursday, get us an accounting of what it is that we did spend and what we thought we might be eligible for. And, and then the current state of play, we can just keep track of. Sure. I can prepare a schedule for Thursday. Okay. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. Just a question. Uh, just, uh, just a question. Uh, the reimbursements that for uh, expenses that we incurred last year, weren't they covered by the uh, 
the CARES Act that were passed last year. Uh, CARES had a lot of restrictions also. Um, we had, a, it was interesting how uh, CARES and the state uh, did this. Um, we all, uh, to get the money funded from the federal government, uh, every town had to put in a, basically a budget of what they thought their expenses would be. We had a placeholder of about $426,000. Um, when we, we did our first submission, uh, there was a lot of going back and forth with it. And I think, I can't remember the dollar amount, I think 230000 we received. Um, when the state realized they had too much money left over, um, they did the second um, issuance as a allocation in December. And they came up with some kind of formula per capita. So we never received the total 426. Uh, we received less than that, three, 300 and something thousand. Um, and a lot of the school stuff was not covered. We have, there's a lot involved with, the, with this because we have to back out any grants the schools are eligible for and other funding, other funding resources so that we don't double dip. Um, so I know that schools did receive some grants too that I know of. Um, well, let's just get an account no. of it. Let's not guess, but it'd be great to get a schedule. I'm sorry, you had yeah. a question? No, I was just, uh, Todd, I just signed back in. We did receive 250,000 for expenditures from last year through the CARES Act. And those were basically entitlement grants tied to the allocation that we get through the Title I grants from the federal government. So they were not based on the expenditures per se, but it was a set amount. Okay. And we were able to um, request reimbursement for allowable expenditures. So of the 2 million or 1 million nine and change that you gave us about 250 has come back. Okay. 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 Well, let's keep track of it. It'd be good to have a bit of an update on that. That's uh, seems like it's moved around a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Brian. Thanks, John. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right. Over to you, uh, Tiger. Thank you, Todd. Um, I'll share my screen and <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you see that all right? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, I um, want to say thank you for having us. Um, we had originally anticipated doing this in person because I feel like uh, if we're going to ask for $12 million or if we're going to ask for $12 million plus our capital, we should actually be staring in the face looking at you man to man or person to person. So I apologize. But uh, I guess this will have to do. Uh, and then I'd like to thank the liaisons. We had a very nice two and a half hour discussion over the budget um, a couple of weeks ago. They had some really good questions. Um, so um, while we go through it, I'll try to remember exactly what they asked and uh, try to fill you in on everything that was uh, discussed. So as an overall, um, we're looking at 1.79% uh, increase year over year. Um, our current operating budget as it stands, including sewer. Um, I include the sewer each year, regardless of whether it helps us or hurts us. This year, it actually hurt us. We were going to be at a 1.4, and then the sewer is a little bit above the, the guidelines, so we're at 1.79, but it's at 10,772, up $189,000 from last year. And I'll quickly run through um, some, of the, uh, some of the departments and give you the highlights of each one. Um, first, I, I did a little analysis as to where we were overall on our budget as far as how it breaks down. I only broke it into four categories. Um, I could break out a fifth category on the contractual services side. But in essence, if you look, uh, the green is salaries and benefits and the gray is utilities. If you take the two together, that's about 63% of our budget is uh, accounted for elsewhere. Um, and then as, when it gets down to contractual services, some of that, when you're looking at it, um, $1.1 million of that is just the transfer station alone, because the as far as our MSW, our recycling, and our bulky waste uh, disposal, those are all contractual services, right? So you're looking at a, a good chunk of change just there, um, and then others are for cleaning services, um, some of our services in the, in the buildings department, since we pretty much... Um, bid all those out and uh, those are all done else, uh, out, of, uh, out of hand, so to speak, by uh, other, other vendors. Uh, so in essence, you're looking at, this is our breakdown overall um, and, and the majority of it, we have no control over as far as what's, uh, what you consider to be um, 
not essential, so to speak, or something that we uh, that we could necessarily cut out. Uh, so moving forward into the operating budgets, we did a, a change in a administration in the past. Um, the DPW director and the deputy director, the assistant director were in the same budget. Um, and then engineering just had the senior engineer in it. Now we have the benefit of having a town engineer. So last year I didn't want to carry uh, or change it too early um, to just look like it was a shell game. So we waited one year after Maria's hire and now we're making the change. So you'll see a while administration goes down by 4.6%, you'll see a corresponding increase in the engineering budget as we transfer her salary over from, from one side to the other. Um, looking at that now you're looking at a percentage change of 2.97 uh the total change of ten thousand dollars and uh the only market change in here is that we had a reduction in our part-time salary lines of about ten thousand dollars from 34 and change down to twenty five thousand uh, dollars and that's for an individual that's helping us with uh transfer station stickers uh wastewater and uh sewage fees um, various uh, special projects that we have running in, in the town. Um, if I move forward to uh, town buildings and look at the town buildings, the percentage changes at 1.19% up $11,000 over last year. Um, and the majority of this or all of this is in our cleaning service. We went out to bid for a five-year contract uh, this summer. And uh, we came back and this is basically um, what year one will look like. It's up $14,550 a year, year over year. Um, majority of that is, has to do with the fact that there's a change in the minimum wage and that'll be reflected as the contract moves forward. And then uh, we're doing some additional cleanings uh, specifically for COVID as far as um, intermediate cleanings uh, inside our larger facilities, the ones that are used the majority of the time. And um, elsewhere, say in uh, bathroom facilities throughout the parks, things of that nature. And then should we have a positive or a suspected positive, we go in and take care of that um, on an as needed basis. And that's, uh, that's built in. So um, I don't know if you have any questions so far. I can't see your face, Todd, so since you're off the screen, so I... Um, I'm good. No, no oh, questions. Good? All right. I just want to, you know, I don't want to roll without like a nod. So I apologize. Sorry, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next would be the highway department. Highway department is basically flat down $4,000. The reason for this is basically a reduction in the salary line items. We've had a, a couple of individuals retire um, and we were able to hire at a lesser rate or a lesser step um, moving in. Excuse me. We did uh add back a little bit of the monies that we cut out last year in our pipe cleaning um, and our outside contractor line. Uh, pipe cleaning is a necessary function for us, keeps our drain lines uh, open, and then we're actually able to TV them and inspect them as they go. So if we have a road paving project or another project planned, we can uh, take a look at the, uh, the drainage lines and then make necessary changes as we go. And uh, like I said, the other was in our outside contractors. And uh, unfortunately this year, we've needed them quite a lot. Um, they help us uh, with some of this, uh, our battling of snow. And then when we go and take snow out of the downtown area, which we've done twice so far, uh, they're integral since uh, we don't have a triaxles, uh, the largest vehicle, uh, largest dump truck. We hire those out so we can actually um, load those up and take the snow out. So. We, uh, we bumped that line item up slightly as well. Uh, if I move to the uh, highway, uh, sorry, to transfer station. Transfer station's up 52,000 from last year. And the majority of this is in our waste disposal lines. We have uh, a new contract for household hazardous waste day. Um, that's uh, basically a regional item. We, we work with the neighboring towns. There's a neighbor, uh, there's a regional bid associated with that. And then um, we take residents in from out of town into our facility and then pay back or, or charge back the municipality they came from and vice versa. Our residents are able to go to other household hazardous waste days um, throughout the region. Unfortunately, this year due to COVID, there was only one household hazardous waste day and it was ours. So uh, we were actually able to hold that for our residents 
which was a good thing. And then uh, we're looking at an increase in our recycling, our garbage hauling and our bulky waste. Um, we're in a uh, second year of our garbage hauling contract. So there's a contractual increase there. Um, and then the same thing. And then we went out for bid this summer for our bulky waste uh, two year contract. And this is a reflective of what will be happening uh, going forward. Um, as far as the municipal solid waste goes, we still have a, what we do is we charge the, the haulers as they dump onto our floor. And at present we're charging $95 a ton, but we're being, we're paying $91 a ton out the door. So we're actually, there's a positive uh, net there as far as that work goes. We tried to price it so that we're just, uh, we're in the sweet spot as far as our surrounding towns, but we're also slightly above what uh, we're paying out so that it actually helps cover some of our overhead for our staffing uh, to um, manage the facility. Um, we go to a transfer station. Hey, Tiger, this yes. is Lundo. Sure. Um, are you gonna talk about the revenue separately? I know we had the discussion about the tipping fees and we're making that adjustments on the right. revenue. We, had a, um, we can, yeah, normally, you know, they're, um, they're such a, you know, we, we have not, normally we don't, but I can certainly bring them up and talk about them if you'd like. Um, you wanna do it, wanna do it at the end? Just finish this? Sure, I'll do it. we could do it. Yeah, we can bring up the, we can talk of the, in, in essence, the, the fees really, the revenues are small on the engineering side and then quite large on the transfer station side. So we can talk through it. Okay. Um, on the park side, um, we have a percentage change of 3.36% or $60,000. Uh, last year, we cut down our mosquito control from four um, applications to three. Uh, we, we feel that it would be a good thing to bring that back to the fourth. That fourth one mostly has to do with Triple E. Um, and uh, we, we think it's a necessary addition. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, we have uh, some increases to our outside contractor line and our outside grass treatment line. Um, the thought being is that we this summer we went through an analysis of our playing fields as far as what had uh, pesticide usage and what didn't, um, and there was a market change between the conditions of the two sets of fields. Um, we did an analysis of Connor Field and, and an analysis of Sachs. Connor came in at a B. Sachs came in at a D. Um, Sachs, due to a uh, state law, can't have any pesticides applied on it. So the only applications or the only things that we can do are necessarily some additional um, seeding and some aeration and other treatments of that nature. Uh, to give you an idea if we decide to, which we did, we added into our budget, we added in uh, two extra treatments for all the fields that do not get pesticide um, pesticides applied. It's only one application per year, but uh, do not have any pesticides applied. And it's approximately $1,000 an acre, 16 acres, two applications, $32,000 a year. So um, that, is the, that is the thought in order to try to help bring those playing fields up to uh, get them out of a D standard into a C or possibly a B minus grade. Um, then we also added back in um, some fertilization at Vine Cottage uh, and then some additional work um, in the front of Waveney. The Conservancy's done a very nice job in the front of Waveney as far as plantings are concerned. And we felt that the, uh, the area, the grass area inside the loop and around the exterior, around the walls um, was deserving of the same. So we added some additional money in there for, for some increased grass treatments in that area to try to beautify the entrance into Waveney. I don't know if you have any questions on parks. Yeah, just a quick question. Sure. Uh, the, so we've had a lot of new turf fields installed. What is the cost of the maintenance of the turf fields relative to the maintenance of the grass fields? Great question. John, do you want to take this one? Sure. There is less day-to-day -day maintenance, like mowing and fertilizing and things like that, but the turf fields are not um, maintenance-free. We, we sweep them regularly. We use two different types of brushes to stand up the turf. We have to add 
um, additional crumb rubber over time that migrates not just in people's shoes, but it also, um, when we clear off the snow and things like that, it migrates away. There's some repairs. So they're not maintenance free. An exact cost analysis, as they get, as the fields get older, there's more maintenance to them. So I don't have an exact number for you. But would you say on average, the, uh, is it just about the same over time or are the grass fields more expensive to maintain? Um, I would say that when you look at the capital cost of needing to replace the carpet at about a 10 year mark, um, they're probably pretty close to the same. That's taken it off the top of my head. The, the one thing that's great about having some turf fields is they play all the time. We don't have to worry about that the fields are too wet, that type of thing. Yeah, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Did that answer your question, Victor? It did, thank okay. you. Okay, all right, thank you. Are there any other questions on the, the park side? I, I will note that um, during the liaison discussion, and um, we were asked, given the fact that the Parks Department was hit hard back in 2007, and we've just kind of broached the coming back into the positive from that high in 2007, 2008, uh, what the additional, uh, an additional man would be um, if we were to add it to the staff, uh, given the fact that when we added Irwin, we were uh, to receive two men at that time and we received one um and so we've been one light so to speak based upon uh the analysis of how many fields we have and how many acreage and parks we have um it's very very hard to quantify um what the savings would be that we were asked if there would be an outside services contractor um savings we would certainly save on some of that but a lot of that work is done during the spring during our busiest season during the spring and fall during our busiest seasons uh, so we would still need that no, need that services. Um, over time for snow removal, we would need less outside help for that. So that would be beneficial. And then we get into more detailed maintenance as far as around our baseball fields. And then other things that we've been able to do, trimming around our ponds, things that necessarily don't get done. And then over time, yeah, you start to look and, and um, the parks start to look what has been labeled as shaggy. Um, which is not a term that I like, nor John. So um, while it's very difficult to quantify um, an overall savings, there would be a benefit um, um, to an additional, an additional man to bring us up to the, the manpower that we were to receive at the time. Every source, every source is not in this number. I know it's not. No, okay. it was just a question that was asked at yeah. the time. So we went back and took a look at it because we've never been asked that question. We've never been asked what happens if you add a guy. We've always been asked what happens if you take a guy away. We've never had it the other way. So it was, it was, it was nice. But it, uh... to, to add a little flavor to our discussion on that, uh, you know, is, is uh, Tiger was going through the parks and, you know, we were, uh, we were all surprised that he's been down a person for this length of time. And it's, you know, the question is, especially given how much the parks were used during COVID and how they kind of saved most of the people in the town and many people in the surrounding town, you know, whether he had enough staff, enough resources. And, and you know, just to put it in perspective, when we did the, um, the group of us that worked on the death study a couple years ago, um, I pulled up something from that. You know, we have like two and a half times the amount of park space that, um, you know, our buddies in Darianne have. And, you know, with Irwin being added with everyone using it so much. I, I don't know if, if Bristol is going to uh, take some additional people power as well. So the question was, if you have somebody and you can flex them through your entire program, not necessarily does it save you money, but is, does it allow you to stay on top of things that you can't otherwise? So we just wanted to, to raise that and, sure. and throw that out. I mean, I know we all like to be very um, prudent and spending money, I think all of us feel that we don't really question how Tiger and Group spends the money. They, there's, you know, their the reporting is great. What they get done is great. But do you have enough resources to keep stuff up? So, Tiger, yes, it, it sounds like you were saying that the additional um, 
uh, employee would allow you to um, reduce some of the outside contractors. So it, it, could it be a wash? Mm -hmm. We we were we we looked at that. We don't think based upon the timing as to when we need outside contractors versus you know our busy season. We didn't feel that it was going to be a wash. Would there be a savings? Yes, but we couldn't we couldn't quantify and say oh it's it's a wash one to one. That was a question. Yeah, you, know, you were you were in the conversation, Chris. The, uh, um, and uh, we couldn't quantify that. Yes, it'd be a one to one savings. We just know that there would be a positive impact to the parks and to our overall. So there'd be a positive <laughs> impacts to the park, but it might be an increase in a budget right. expense. Yeah. It would, it would but be it a, wouldn't yes. be it wouldn't be the complete cost of that individual because there'd be some offsets. There would be some offsets, that's correct, but we, we it would not be a one-to-one, -one, no. Yeah. It might be interesting to see what that would be. Now, we, 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 we talked about, can you hear me? I don't know. If, I yeah, can't see can myself. You, I don't know what happened. We can't um, see you, but we can hear you. What happened to my, I don't, my frame. Anyway, um, yeah, we did talk about this at length because I remembered this from the original referendum. And my concern is twofold. It's one, the usage of the parks. It's so increased, especially now. And we need to really keep it up. Um, also, I'm concerned about the, you know, the trees. I think we need more money in the tree budget. And I know I've said this before, but it's been, you know, like 12 years since we had the extra hundred, more than 12 years since we've had the extra hundred thousand for tree work. And I think that is getting a little shabby. So between the two, I'd like to see more money in, in the budget in general, whether it's a person or it's the tree budget. I'm, I'm game for either one. Well, what was the consensus of the working group? We, we all agreed. I think we all agreed, didn't we? Yeah, yes, and I, and I believe, um, Tiger, correct me if I'm wrong, that the all-in cost of adding someone, you could do it and still stay under that 2% um, guidance. And, and that's without giving your department any credit for the revenues that you bring in at the transfer station. Because when Parker Rex talks about it, they say, you know, you spend this much money, what we give you this much back on a dollar, which I'm completely fine with that analysis. But, you know, if we looked at the, um, your department similarly, you know, for every dollar spent, you know, you do bring in revenues from the transfer stations, et cetera, to offset those costs. And the wastewater plant. Wastewater, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's usually that's never been part of the analysis, um, which is fair. fine with us. You know, to not have it netted out, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable. You know, just looking on the expense side. Um, so what, yeah, we, what, can, what, we can go ahead, Neil. Yeah, yeah. What is the next step on that? Then is there a process to evaluate it, or is that one of your goals for the first few weeks, or or do you feel like you could recommend it right now if the, if there was money enough to to approve that? I, I would like to, well, I would love to have them drop in right now. I'd like to just um, give a little bit further analysis and say, this is where we are, just to um, help answer Chris's question just a little bit more deep in detail. And then- What would uh, the all-in cost be, Tiger, for someone? Do we, I don't have the health side of it, but- 100, you know, 100, 100 and change. Mm -hmm. It's about 65 for the, for the gentleman and say, if you go 35, 37 for the benefits, you're at 102. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not quite certain on the benefit side. So all in, we were looking at 100,000. At, if uh, at the six, when we were talking before at the 65,000, yeah, that was gonna, that would bring us pretty much right up to our 2% marker. So um, what the one question I would have is, is that we talked about trees, we talked about snow plowing, we talked about a whole bunch of things. Is, is it realistic to think of that person as all of those things or do you, do we really need no. a full time tree person or, you know, yeah. The so tree it, service it, is completely separate. Yeah. The, um, that's, that's pretty much, um, um, that is contracted out nearly a hundred percent or if not a hundred percent besides this, the tree warden salary, everything else is, uh, right. is contracted. Right. So now that there's, there's no savings on the tree service budget. Well, it's strictly being the, if you could just work with the the, the committee and you make us Amy and and um, and Judy and just come back with it with it, what you're thinking about and then answer George's question make some sense and maybe there's some partial offset somewhere and and I guess I could ask you guys if you could bring that to us for we I mean we 
we really don't vote on this till next Thursday, right? The fourth. Right. Is that okay, Amy? You sure. Just, yeah. yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll stick it around and, and see what yeah. you have. Maybe put a couple options together and then we can discuss it on um, Thursday the fourth, Tiger. And and okay. make it. Okay. okay. That, that, that would be great. Thank thank you very much. Um so if we if we move forward from parks, <clears throat> we move to the nature center. Uh, we're looking at a uh, percentage change of uh, minus 4.5%. It's strictly in the fuel and propane um, side of it, uh, $2,800 worth. Uh, this is um, our side of the nature center. Nature center takes care of the majority of the work, but we take care of the landlord issues. Um, and the, the calculation on the fuel oils is a five-year rolling average, take out the high, take out the low, um, average the three in the middle versus the... Uh, contractual cost that we will have for purchasing the fuel, which is, uh, will be down from this year to next year, which is a nice savings. Um, so that makes up that difference there. Um, if I move on to utilities, it's uh, an increase of 2.14%. Um, we're assuming a 3% increase in our hydrant service. Every year we get a letter from Aquarian telling us uh, how much the hydrant service would be and that they'll be asking for pure from anywhere from a two to a 7% or six and a half percent increase. We've stuck with a 3% increase over time. Um, in uh, a couple of years, I actually held it flat since it looked like there, there wasn't the same type of growth um, on the expenditure as we were anticipating. This year, we feel we've got to add a little bit in, but this, uh, the town utilities are our hydrant service, um, the, fees that we pay to Eversource for our lights, um, the down, not the downtown lighting, but the lights throughout uh, the rest of the, of the town. And then our contribution for um, uh, our sewer or the use of the town buildings to the sewer fee itself, which uh, stands at 48,900 this year. So um, I don't know if you have any questions on the utilities itself. Thank you, George. The uh, tree service, um, in essence, basically, we uh, I took out $7,900 last year to go to the minus two. I put the $7,900 back. Really, oh, cool. the um, the um, right now he's three quarters done with his budget at the half year mark. So yeah. just had another but, uh, bid that went out um, that came back. He's he'll be in essence every year he runs out of money somewhere in the May range. You know, and then we're, we're forced to hold uh, whatever work we've got in, in a kind of meet it out a little bit through May and June and then start again with a fresh budget. Uh, this budget, if you look back a number, number of years ago, used to be in the 550 range. Um, previous tree warden dropped out $150,000 and we stayed at the pretty much the $400,000 mark since um, and, and, Tiger, and that's, yeah. that's reflective of doing, it's not that we got a better deal on the tree work, it's just we're no. doing less tree work at 400 than 450 or 550. That's correct. It's completely contracted out. The only thing that we were asking um, was uh, a slight increase for in the tree maintenance budget of $20,000. That's not reflective of here. That was discussed at the Board of Selectmen level um, to add $20,000 back into tree maintenance. Um, that could be for anything from pruning to fertilization to even tree planting. Mm -hmm. uh, tree Warden puts out 12 bids a year. In essence, it's around 240 or more locations um, per year. And then all those are all removals. So they're either one, two or three trees per location. So if you're looking at uh, overall tree canopy, you know, the majority of it is, is uh, we're taking down. We, wind up replanting very minimal amount. Um, and it's usually based on donations or partnerships with either the garden club or the beautification league or others that come to us and uh, ask to help plant the tree. Um, did, did you add the 20,000 back? I, uh, you lost me on that one. Is I don't, I, I, uh, to be honest with you, Todd, I, I don't know. I, I apologize. I know it was asked at the board of select level and I didn't verify. So I apologize. Todd? The Board of Selectmen did add 20,000. So in the budgets that you have, if you look at the Board of Selectmen approved on page 24, it does show that the tree budget is 423,736. Okay, all right. Fantastic. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome.
Very good. It's, um, but it's still 130,000 below what it was a number of years ago, correct? When, that, when, when we correct. had, uh, Tiger, when we had the original 150,000 for the four years from three to seven, that was after the first bad storm. And it was, there was just a lot of damage that needed, you know, continuous care. We also included in that uh, the organic oil spray for the really mature old trees because we were losing old trees and quickly taking them out and not replacing them. And, it, and you could see the void. I mean, it was, it was evident. And we did do, I would say we did a modest job of improvement over four years, but not to the point that it's so many trees in town, it takes so long to get it right. And with the storms, it's even harder. So I, I really think this, this budget needs to be improved, yeah. Is, is the cost of the uh, uh, tree work actually increased? That is, for your 400000 are you getting less than you would have gotten a few years ago for 400000 Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, what's, the, what, what's the inflation factor, do you suppose? I, uh, it's, well, it's commensurate with, uh, you know, with the wage increases. It, it's, right now, they're just, uh, contractors are, you know, beating themselves up to, to come in. That's all. But we are... Uh, based upon the number of bids he's putting out and the number of locations, it is less work, you know, year over year. Um, by by keeping it flat, it's just year, it's less work. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we're paying. We're yeah. So not only are we uh, have we taken money out of the budget, but the monies that are in there are buying us less. Correct. Yeah. Correct. We are getting. You know, Eversource does a very nice job. They've had a, a very uh, robust tree trimming program for the past five years or more since uh, uh, since we got hit with the hurricanes a number of years mm -hmm. ago kind of came through they are starting to scale that back this year and next year they're starting to scale that program back a little bit but last year they came in and did 63 miles of tree trimming in town now granted that's only their lines um, and uh, some of it's just tree trimming some of it is removals um, but they are they are helping in that regard and, and uh, I, I think we've seen a positive impact as far as storm damage difficult to quantify but uh, you know based upon the damage that we had in previous storms to what we had just recently i would say that we've seen a positive impact mm -hmm. thanks you're welcome <clears throat> uh if we move forward we we'll move to uh the town hall annex we kept this in here only because it was asked by the board of finances the, the monies are absorbed elsewhere but the budgets the, the amount of money spent at the annex flat um year over year um, there's just an, um, we just carried everything through it at a zero rate. Um, but at present it's costing us about $40,000 a year <clears throat> to do that. We are looking at possibilities of way to offset that maybe with some solar installations on the Playhouse Theater and then having that shine back onto, uh, the town hall annex and drop the electrical rate there. But that, that that's for a future discussion. Uh, if we go to the wastewater plant. Uh, sewer budget, as I mentioned, is at 4.61%. Um, this is due to an increase in our sludge hauling contract, um, and then some monies in our buildings and grounds for our chemical, for our chemical usage. Uh, the sludge hauling contract is, 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 in essence, we went out to bid, and uh, they're the reflective of the new numbers. I do have to note that we did receive our uh, newest five-year discharge permit. Um, I'm working on a year in review report for you. Um, it is in its final draft stage as I wanted it for this evening, but I'm a little bit late, a little bit late, but you'll have it in there. It details out exactly the new permit and what happens. But uh, in essence, I had a, I had budget envy. Dr. Alessi had a beautiful 182 page budget book and I, that I saw a week or so ago when he presented to the Board of Finance and I thought we needed to do something commensurate. So I have about a 59 page year in review report for you to kind of tell you what we've done over the year. Um, but in essence, uh, they've uh, haven't rescinded the order, but in essence, the order has been rescinded for uh, our zinc and phosphorus. We've been able to maintain our interim limits and uh, the permit reflects that going forward. So the, uh, the large upgrade necessary um, or that was looming uh, can necessarily be removed from the books at present which was uh, welcome news. 
Um, and then to give you other good news from the sewer department itself, um, our nitrogen credits this year were budgeted at $48,000. Um, last year was 42. To date, we received $1.35 million. Uh, Amy, this is to your point about revenues as far as it goes. Um, and that's just running a clean plant and running it very well. That's, that's basically all that is, is we got $1.35 million since 2002 for doing just that, running the plant well. And then our septage fees to date are at about 2.75 million. Um, our estimate for 21 was $247,000. Our estimate for 22 is 249. The interesting thing about that is that due to COVID, we saw a very large increase in our septage, um, about a 21% increase in our septage year over year. Um, and while that related to some additional costs on our side, um, it also related to additional revenues. So it wound up being a, a net swing for us of a positive of $21,000 in additional fees received just purely due to the fact that people are home more and utilizing the facilities here more. Um, so if we, uh, if there's no other questions, I'll go to capital. I would imagine everyone's waiting for that. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> up sure, up sorry. Um, are, is there any expense related to looking at the quality of the buried sewer pipes? Or do we just install those sewer pipes and kind of forget about them? Oh no, that's in the capital side. It's a great question. Yeah. Um, we have a we have a sewer cleaning line item that uh, we do about ten thousand dollars worth of work every year. We try to do about a third of our sewer system every year. Take a look at it. We clean it, inspect it, TV it, and then do minor repairs. And uh, this year we actually have monies in the budget to do the the line from East Avenue to Locust on Main Street. It's very old, it's very deep. Um, Eversource Gas is gonna come in and put in a gas line or continue the gas line right now. It stops on Main Street at East Avenue uh, and they're gonna go up to Locust, turn right and go down to Forest. Aquarian Water is gonna come in and do the exact same thing. They finish their water main installation on Main Street at Oak Street. They're gonna continue up Main to Church, take a left onto Church, go up to South Avenue, take a right on South Avenue, go to Cherry, take a right on Cherry come back down to Maine, take a left on Main Street and go all the way to Locust. So they're gonna go through the downtown area and uh, tear up that entire stretch of road. And at that point in time, we'll have brand new gas service, brand new water main, and we feel it's uh, in our best interest to then go in and in situ form or reline that existing sewer line. And then at that point in time, um, according to the state, I had a conversation th uh, this afternoon with, with the state inspector, they're going to make Aquarian repave curb to curb um, Main Street from at least from Locust down to Cherry and then other areas. And then we'll do the same on the work that they're doing in our on our road. So Main Street through that entire stretch will be uh, brand new. Hopefully. And when you, when you do that kind of um, inspection, what is the frequency that you find that there is a leakage in the piping? It's a, that's a little bit different, but um, there's a different study that's called an INI &I study, an infiltration and inflow study. We have monies budgeted um, from last year to go and do a, um, an entire study of our, our system. It's a $200,000 study where we come through. Um, it's uh, required by, by our permit to go in every number of years. Last time we did it was about 20 years ago. And we'll go through and do that. And at that point in time, put together a plan to take care of some of those larger leakage um, leakages that are coming in. So we're getting additional inflow, specifically during rain. We get a, you know, a large amount of inflow into our system at that point in time. But that's what this study, that's what that proposed study will take care of. Take, show us exactly where our problems are and then give us a plan to go forward with, uh, with repairs and, and um, stopping those, stopping that inf infiltration and inflow. Does that answer okay. your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. Tiger. Uh, um, yeah. You have an increase in septage of 21%. So that, it, that accounts for both uh, the septics that end up dumping at the, at the treatment plant, as well as the increase in in-town usage of the sewer system. Is that no, right? This is, no, this is strictly, this is strictly deliveries to the, to the plant. Okay. So, so if, if they pump out your, if you have septage at your house and they pump out, 
they pay a hundred dollars per thousand gallons to come to to dump with us okay so how about the capacity i mean obviously the capacity increased on the septage what about capacity increase because of covid related to people usage of of the sewer system as well yeah right? we I, I asked jimmy that question it's it's difficult to quantify um mainly due to victor's question okay which is it's difficult to quantify because in a rain event we get inflow, mm -hmm. right? We'll get in, you know, so we'll get in, we'll get inflow and infiltration, right? So we have, uh, we have people who have their sump pump hooked up to the sewer, right? So that's in essence a no-no, right? So we get that problem and then we'll get leaky pipe syndrome whereby rainwater comes in and then comes into the plant. So it's very difficult. While we do know that there's an increase, it's very difficult to quantify. And the only reason we know there's an increase is because we're seeing the increase on the septage side. So since you're seeing the increase on the septic side, you know that there's got to be an increase on the other, but it's dif too difficult to quantify. Okay. Sorry. But, uh, we, did, we did look at that and try to figure it out, but it's too difficult to quantify. Uh, as far as our capital's concerned, um, our capital request is uh, $9,515,000 this year, up $90,000 or 0.96% over last year. There is an asterisk next to that number because I deducted the police department from that. I had deducted it last year. Last year, we had a placeholder for $5 million and $5 million. This year, we have a placeholder for seven and a half and seven and a half. And just to make it apples to apples, I took that out. So, um, because uh, we are still working uh, through the the building committee process, and then uh, and then we'll be coming forward with cost estimates and a and a true cost of a construction later. But I just to give you you know just to give you apples to apples comparison. Um, on the engineering side, the request is five million six hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars down slightly from five million seven one three. Uh, we have our standard pavement management program two point four three eight million dollars. Uh, $2 million of bonding, $438,000 coming from a grant, um, from two separate grants uh, from the state. We are at year 17, 18 out of the 20 year program. We're very, very close to finishing. Um, however, we have a lot of uh, roads right now that are coming back online after Eversource's, uh, Eversource Gas's installation. I had uh, discussions with them as far as what would that entail or how would we be looking at bringing those roads back up to current standards? Um, anything to give you reference, anything that was uh, installed in 2018, they had three years to put the main in and the services in. <clears throat> so we had 18, 19 and 20. And uh, at that point in time in 21, it was slated to be repaved. Um, the problem is that COVID for 2020 was in essence a wash. So we're trying to determine what the saturation rate is for people um, who have connected to gas and who want to connect to gas to make sure that our saturation rate is high enough whereby we don't uh, pave the road, put in a two-year moratorium on gas service installation, and then someone necessarily loses out. We don't want to have a resident lose out. So we're working with Eversource right now and coming through with a plan. I told them that my main focus um, was I had my big, I had my top five and we were able to bring Fieldcrest and Village online at the end of this past year, uh, having all the services or whoever wanted service done. And then we repaved it and um, put in new sidewalks there. I have Mortimer, Brinkerhoff, and Lockwood are my next three because those were the ones that we were going to do. They were at the end of our their useful life or way past the end of their useful life. And then they had to sit and go through the, the problem of having a gas line put on them and then wait. Uh, so those are mandatory for me to re be redone early in the year and then I want to see Main Street done. So I asked Eversource to um, escalate work on Main Street so we could get at least up to Oak done and then when Aquarian comes in and, and starts to put their line in from Oak forward we can at least have from Farm Road to Oak Street done prior. Excuse me and if you ask me for my fifth one it would be Gower Road but uh, we are working with uh, Eversource right now on, on figuring that out. And our hope is that pretty soon we'll, we'll get out of the cycle and then we'll get into some less costly repairs, uh, get out of the uh, reclaim and pave, which is the most costly. That comes down to about, uh, at times, $60 a square foot and get down into the mill and pave or then hot in place, asphalt recycling, micro, micro pave, cave seal, things of that nature where 
whereby you drop down from a $22 per square yard all the way down to say a $9 per square yard from a high of 60. So at that point in time, we're hoping that our, our as we move forward on the management program, that number can drop. Um, in the past, we estimated that it would be $2 million per year to stay current with our, with our current PCI. The, uh, the additional half million dollars continues to allow us to get our PCI um, up to the standard that we want at 85. Right now, I think we're at an 83.55, um, up from 82 and change from last year. So we are still on the rise and uh, we're close to being done and we hope within the next two years, we'll top out. So, uh, Tiger, this is, a, this is a kind of a perpetual question on this. So do we, is there any uh, in your operating budget is there any of the pavement uh, management and operating budget, or is we still looking at this as 100% bonding? Um, and I continue to argue that if we pave every year and we do stuff every year, is it capital or is at least some of it operating? So I just think in terms of, and I know it's, they're two different buckets and you could say they wash, but you know, it's one thing to say, to keep our roads up, this is what we have to spend from an operating perspective versus every road action is a capital cost amortized over 20 years. So is Well, there you're any- talking about, you're, you're, you're in essence saying pay as you go versus bonding because yeah, least, they'll, still, they'll still be yeah. a capital expense. It's a question whether or not you're paying as you go or so. Yeah. Um, but as we look a, at that's that, a question that's question for the board of finance. Finance, right? Yeah. So I'm just raising that and, you know, I kind of bring it up every year and I know we've tried to move some into the operating budget and this is maybe more of a messing around with the budget question, but. I just think, you know, Darian doesn't bond for the roads. You know, they, they do it current and people talk about- The condition of the roads are nowhere near ours. Amy, well, you do okay. a great job. No, no question on your on your work, just in terms of how we pay for it. That's mm-hmm. it. No, thanks. I'm, I'm really joking, but the, uh, in essence, but the, no, I, that's more of a question for the Board of Finance. I know, I think it was two years ago, you put, you changed, you put $350,000 right. into the capital side, not, you know, the tax supported yeah. capital versus the bonded. It's really a question for the Board of Finance. Correct, yeah. And that's when we did the debt study. That was one of the recommendations we were looking at. So I'll just raise it for the rest of the group. We'll right. talk about it later. Yeah, we'll talk about it when we do the um, actual actual numbers, I think, yep. Amy. Um, yeah, it comes down to trading off expense for really cheap money. Um, but we'll see where we are when we tumble all the numbers to answer, I think, that question. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a question for you, Tiger. On the on the pavement uh, management program and the Ponus Bridge, did, did, maybe you said it and I missed it. What was the amount that we think that will come back from the grants? The, for the pavement management program, four hundred and thirty-eight thousand is estimated to come back. Um, that's two separate grants: is a TAR grant, Town Aid Road, um, and then our LOSIP funding, our local capital improvement funding. It's about three hundred and change, and uh, and then $100,000 and change for, for both of them respectively. And then for PONUS, um, I just got an email yesterday saying that uh, they're thinking that the estimate of construction for PONUS is going to increase to 2.5 million. I want to verify that first. Uh, but the good thing on that is it's 80% funded by the federal government. So 20% comes from the town. So while it's a, it would be an increase in overall construction costs. Um, we would only bear 20% of that. Um, so I just want to verify that before we change the numbers and I'll have that, I'll have that to Linda before, uh, before you vote. Um, just be clear though, just on the capital request though, we're, we're, we would actually go out and borrow the two five and then get reimbursed. Is that the, that the... It's a, yes, it's a reimbursement type of uh, situation whereby we have to pay and then uh, we put in a reimbursement. They've historically been quite quick on the reimbursement um, uh, of late. Uh, in the past, uh, say five years ago or, or more, took quite a long time to get our reimbursement, but uh, they've been very good of late. Um, we, in essence, we, we uh, process the monthly estimate for the contractor, and then we send that with a, with a separate form to the state for reimbursement, and then it comes back four to six weeks later. Tiger, how long do you expect that TAR grant to go on? Most of it's gone longer than we expected, but how about the TAR? Town Aid Road has been around for a long time. Those, that, I know. Uh, some of that, some of that uh, some towns rely strictly on that for their paving. They have no other monies going in. 
um, some of the smaller towns. So that's that's a that's a necessary grant that I don't think will ever go away. Oh, I hope you're right. <laughs> um, so then we have uh, we have our standard monies in for our uh, um, we have we have our standard parking lot improvement of three hundred thousand dollars. This year, I increased the sidewalk improvements to five hundred from the three hundred. Um, only to place forward a marker in the fact that uh, in 2003, the POCD detailed out um, how, the nature of what we should be doing as far as our sidewalk network. And then it was reinforced in 2014. And in 2014, our backlog of what we consider to be new construction, meaning new installations went from approximately a million and a half to just over $4 million. Uh, now we are offsetting some of that with a potential grant from um, our LOTSIP grant that we just put in a local transportation capital improvement for Richmond Hill. We are still looking at approximately three and a half to $4 million of a backlog. And um, I wanted it to be placed out there that by either the sidewalk improvement money at $300,000 gets unshackled as far as it's not just for maintenance or reconstruction, but it's actually for possibly new installation or at least give us two pots, one for new installations and one for the maintenance going forward. We have, um, uh, we have 20 miles of road, uh, 20 miles of sidewalk. At a 20 year lifespan, you need to do a mile a year. A mile a year is 250 to $300,000 in cost. So if we wanna see our sidewalk network increase, we've gotta put some additional money in. Um, millennials now wanna walk, people wanna walk. Um, it was about the only thing that they could do during COVID was walk. We saw that mm -hmm. uh, quite readily. Uh, and uh, while our walkability score is quite high, uh, we could do better. And um, it's, uh, each year I get a number of requests or, or repeat requests for sidewalk installations or new sidewalk installations. And it's getting very difficult to continue to tell the taxpayer no. Um, so that, that's, that's my pitch. And then after that, we have- uh, What, what exactly is the, uh, our, our obligation to put down sidewalks? There is no obligation, but we oh, have right. it. We placed it in the plan of conservation and development. And then at that point in time, that's supposed to be the town's plan moving forward. But so, since 2003, we haven't really funded that or gone forward with that. You know, the, We've had um, very minimal new installations, the, the largest one being Main Street. Right. At that so, point in time, we, so, we haven't so for, really done it. So for, th for, th for $3 million or $4 million, where, where would we put these sidewalks? There, I, uh, I have, I'll send you the list of where they are. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Uh, about 10 miles worth of, uh, of sidewalks, right? It, well, yeah, it gets, it, it gets quite lengthy. But yeah. the, uh, the, in, in essence, all I did was uh, either I had a residential request, and it, 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 the interesting thing was the residential request mirrored what the POCD said, right? It, it yeah. wasn't, uh, it really didn't, um, they weren't, they didn't diverge at all. They, they very much were a convergence at the time when, uh, when we took a look at it. Oh, these are the requests we're getting and this is exactly what the POCD says. And we didn't, we didn't provide that information to the planner. The planner came up with that on, on their own. Um, hey Tiger, is there a sure. rule of thumb in terms of uh, what distance from the center of town will do sidewalks? Is there like the center of towns here will go out two miles, three miles? I mean, is there kind of some sort of- Yeah, there was- the, 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 at some point, right? Yeah, that's correct. So you're, you're, you're trying to get your, your, your most dense areas. The, um, the 2003 plan detailed out uh, trying to connect um, all of your amenities, so your parks with your downtown, your schools with your parks and your schools with your downtown, things of that nature. The 2014 plan took a little bit more of an approach that you had, which was basically they took a quarter mile radius and then a half mile radius and then looked inside that. And that radius was based upon the train station, the downtown train station. So your walkability to the train station at that time, right, which in our case, you know, coincides with a uh, our downtown, right? Which is, so it's a perfect <laughs> convergence at that point. Um, and that was the thought. So that's really where, and that's really where we're looking is inside that, uh, inside that bubble, so to speak. Um, and then we have our, we have our standard drainage improvements, guide rail replacement, signage replacement. 
We do have $50,000 for cameras and security upgrade a line item for that. Uh, I believe we'll discuss that on Thursday. Um, and then we have a new line for an energy savings initiative master plan, whereby we would like to hire a consultant to come forward, take a look at all of our buildings holistically, um, take a look at what energy upgrades we could do. We've done, a, we've done quite a bit of uh, LED changeovers and lighting changeovers and things like that. Uh, and we started, you know, looking in at the solar. So now we'd like to kind of look at it even a little bit deeper. Some, uh, so some more savings on solar, possibly some CHP, maybe some electrical upgrades, things of that nature, and uh, come together with an entire master plan instead of looking at it as, oh, well, we could do the highway garage. Oh, we could go do the wastewater plant. I want to look at, we have 57 structures. Let's look at 57 structures, right? So that's, that's the overall thought yeah. uh, there. I don't, I do I don't two, have any, two sorry. Quick yeah, two quick sure. comments. One, on, on the sidewalk improvement, I, I don't know how much of that's for sidewalk repair and how much of it's for sidewalk extensions. The 200, 300 split, so new and old. 200, 300 split, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And on the, then on the, uh, as a reminder to everybody, including on the, on the Board of Ed side, j j there may be a capital item of call it $25,000 for signage replacement. We may or may not do that with capital. We may do that out of operating. So we'll, we'll make that determination. But it's great to have it on the list. We want to get it done. Don't, don't get it, don't, don't get me wrong. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get it done. But the question, how we pay for it, don't know yet. We may mm -hmm. not, we may not borrow for that. It's capital. Right. Yeah. How we I, pay think, for it. I think the same thing with the uh, uh, energy savings initial, uh, yeah, uh, initial that. that might be an operating cost, but I, I think it's an outstanding idea. I think we really got to do this. Yeah, it's, that'll be a payback. On the cameras and security, and I know we'll talk about it later, but are we, 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 we're going to have monitors for those people monitoring those? I guess we can talk about it. We'll talk we, about it. Thursday. Yeah, we could. Yeah, that'll be a discussion for Thursday. Okay, good. I think. It just happens to be sitting here, so I didn't want to not touch on it. Yep, uh, that's good. All right. Uh, we could move forward to the other departments. Yep. Uh, well, to give you an idea, uh, I'll step back. So we had a very successful project this year. I'm very, very happy. Um, I told, talked about my big five, right? So my big five, the top two were Fieldcrest and Village. And this is lower Fieldcrest. Uh, the left-hand trench is the gas trench. The right-hand trench is Aquarian water that's underneath the postal truck, the postal vehicle. This is was um, taken just before repaving. Um, and then this is the look now. So to give you an idea of what the, uh, the two side-by-side -side asphalt sidewalks and pavement from the 1970s to brand new pavement, curving concrete sidewalks, and it's an entirely new development with old trees. So it's kind of like it's a move in, it's, it's the perfect scenario, it's a perfect community. Um, we were very happy to be able to bring this forward. We brought it forward one year prior. So we brought it forward in 2020. The residents were excellent, came forward with an initiative. Um, they said that they wanted to see the road repaved. I told them that I couldn't do it till 2021 unless everyone was satisfied with their service installation mm -hmm. from source. And they went door to door and were able to get that done and get everyone either signed up or saying no, that they didn't want it. And we came forward in, in uh, September and took care of it. Good job. So Great. thank you. Yeah, uh, as far as town buildings are concerned, um, the request is $8.8 .8 .8 million, but if I take the $7.5 million off for the police department, it's 1.377. That's uh, down from the 1.664 from last year. Uh, we have monies in for the Irwin Park barn roof. This was pushed off from last year. Uh, so we pushed it forward to this year. Um, we have a parks garage roof. We're looking at a new installation, putting in a basically a shed roof off the back of the parks garage. Uh, John has a number of pieces of equipment that sit out uh, 24/7, 365, and uh, we feel it's we can get a, a lot more bang for our buck and, and increase the uh, life expectancy of that equipment if we can actually get it under cover. Um, it also it saves some wear and tear on the vehicle, saves on just uh, it snows and to get that piece of equipment out, you've got to uncover it and then go use it. So it's, it's, a, it's a, for us, um, we had monies in for the engineering last year in the budget and uh, this year for construction. Uh, we went to bid, this is pretty much a hard number for uh, the work that we would like to do. Uh, we have 
$168,000 slated to redo the potting shed at, out in Waveney. Um, I can go two ways on this as far as bringing it forward and doing this, but the, the, the thought from the uh, liaisons was to take a step back, give a, to look at it holistically, look at it entirely and say, okay, what's it gonna be to do the roof, the exterior, fix the floor, and then put in two bathrooms with a heating system. Um, so we can, we can, I asked for a design estimate for that from a, from a local architect, a preservationist, and uh, came forward with about $35,000, $40,000 for the design. That's about 15% of the construction costs. The construction costs would bring it up to about 233,000 all in. So um, the thought being that we could step back, just do the design this year, and then come back to you with a better number next year for the construction. Um, we have $170,000 in for the heating system. This is the break off the EMS building from the police department. Um, as we move forward with uh, renovation from the police department, uh, we have $123,000 um, of money slated for the carriage barn for ADA upgrades and amenity upgrades there. Um, this is in partnership with the carriage barn itself. They're putting forward uh, a sizable amount of money from, um, from their, for their facility to, uh, to do this work. And then we have $141,000 for the town hall annex. This is for various work. Um, the majority of which is to bring it online from an emergency management standpoint. Right now it houses our human services and uh, they have an integral part, especially now during COVID, but even during uh, storms, um, they are tasked with reaching out to our vulnerable population and our seniors. Um, and for, for their, due to certain laws and privacy laws, it's best for them to be working in their own facility. This would bring in a generator line or an electrical line from the town hall to the town hall annex, not put in a generator itself, but we have extra capacity in the town hall generator and generate the carriage barn from that instead of putting in its own facility. Putting in its own facility, it's one extra generator that we would have to take care of and the location of it would be straight out in front of the building next to the parking lot. We don't have a lot of real estate up there. Uh, and then we have about another 13 separate areas on the facility to report that, that are um, of lesser value, lesser monies. Um, I don't know if you have any. Yeah, quick, quick one quick question sure. then over to the gang. Um, the Waveney potting shed, what's your proposal? What, do you, what are you asking us to approve? I, uh, I personally would like to uh, take a step back, engineer it, and then come back forward. Okay. That's what I would like to do. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, so I'd like it. I'd like this number to be revised from 168 down to 40, and then, uh, and at that point in time, that'll take care of my engineering. Then I can come forward and say, okay, to redo this entire situation, give us a couple of bathrooms and uh, a heating system, and it's all all in is going to be X, and then we go forward from there. I think. It's okay. All right, that makes sense. Let's make sure that's in the proposal back, for, and Linda has that in our numbers, and um, uh, that makes sense. Okay, Amy, you had a question? You're on mute. Tiger, I think, I think, if, could you go into a little bit more on the town hall annex, and, and we yeah. talked about this in the liaison meeting, mm -hmm. because, you know, a year ago, the town hall annex, we didn't know we were going to take it down, do X, Y, or Z, and I do understand health and human services is in the bottom part of it. Right. Top part is a dance studio. And understand that people need secure places to work. Um, of course, town hall is secure and it's a couple steps away. And we're just talking about when we have power emergency issues. So I that one I that one I, I have trouble getting my arms around because you know it just seems and I know people need privacies, but you know, most stuff's on laptops and you can you know, it'd be one thing if you, you needed this to make sure that the heating system and everything worked all the time, but, but it works. This is just um, for those unusual times when you have power situations, correct? Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, it's basically whenever there's a power interruption, they can continue to work, right? They don't have to vacate the premises. So it's, a, in, in my opinion, it's it, it's a uh, right, but, but it's, they it's have power function. lines, right? I mean, it, it, it's very powered lines there. It's not like in my house where 
a tree is going to take down. In the town hall, we we go off power whenever whenever there's a power outage in town. We're off. We're on the generator. Yeah. Um, we uh this year we um through that entire situation, town hall was on generator, and we brought a generator over to Vine Cottage to uh to make sure that um, the health department could function. The thought being is that uh, during every single time there is a there is an emergency, they're an integral part, so they're basically a, an adjunct to our EOC. Um, making phone calls and well visits and then not necessarily, and then receiving the public. Right now we, we moved them once, right? So you moved them out of Vine Cottage, moved them all to, moved over to the Town Hall Annex. So now your most vulnerable population had to get used to going to the Town Hall Annex. In an emergency situation, I'm gonna ask them, no, they're not here, they're at the EOC. No, they're not here, they're at the Town Hall. It's, it, to me, it's not, it's not the way we should be, way we should be acting. And, um, and then just, on a given, on a prolonged power outage, just to do their work, they'd be taken out of their offices. We wouldn't have any way to have them, to be, allow them to work in their office, um, you know, doing the doing the day to day, not even the emergency operations part of it. We looked at it a little bit tighter. You know, the seventy two thousand dollars of it is is mechanicals, you know, is is switchgear and things of that nature. And then there is a fifty thousand dollar item for trenching across the way. Could we do better than that? Probably, yeah. I could probably do better, but I did. I didn't want to reduce the number down from one forty one down to another number, and, and you know, so we left. I, I left it as what we had discussed. Yeah, I, I'm not. I I'm not feel strongly. I'm not calling with your estimates on the cost. I'm just uh, I, questioning. Yeah, we, were in a dis we were in disagreement then. Yeah. You know, so we were in disagreement then. We we'll continue to disagree. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Can I just add something to that too with the generator? Um, during the summer, when we start getting heat waves in, um, we take the town hall offline and go on a generator um, for two reasons. One, when the brownouts start coming in, we start losing our uh, computer systems and stuff start shutting down. Um, so we go on the generator to come off the grid. That helps the community, but it also helps the life of all our electronic equipment in the town hall. This would also benefit then those working at the annex uh, by coming offline. If our generator is running, okay. <clears throat> just refresh my um, my memory. When we developed the original EEOC plan, it included the generators just for this reason. Um, we have the generators. Do we not have the portable generators just for this purpose? We don't have one for the annex. No, we have. What ha what happened to the extra one that was stored that we talked about for, I don't know, three or four years? We have one, but the, the annex is not set up for it, nor is it capable of handling the annex. So, and the, the thought being too, is that the annex, the upper floor of the annex, you could ask the dance academy not to uh, participate or not hold classes. And you could use that as a sheltering area uh, for heat and cold. Um, but we don't have the capacity to, uh, the generator that we have, we have additional generator that we can bring around to our pump stations. We have one, like I said, brought to Divine Cottage. We have one that we're trying to retrofit for other facilities, but we don't have one that would that would be suitable for the annex. All right. We have a well, the majority of them are all are, are generated in and of themselves. So police is generated, fire is generated, town hall, the big three, and then uh, and then this is this is an adjunct to uh, this is just to tie this one on. All right, just just a thought. Mm -hmm. Just a lot for a few no, it's weeks. A good thought. You know, it's it's a, it's a lot for a few weeks, and that was the reason we did this. I don't know, hard to because believe to it doesn't work. Yeah, to buy a generator for that location would be more money than this. So this is the less costly alternative. Uh, Interesting. And then, it, and then it's Interesting. one less okay. one less piece of equipment we have to maintain. All right. Any other questions on town buildings? Hi, Greg. I, Bob Hill, I had a question. Just generally, inflation. I mean, how it seems to me commodity prices are up, oils up. We're doing a lot of roofs. We're like, I mean, how much risk do you see in these numbers when you go out to actually get bids? Things are reopening. I'm, I'm concerned on roads, cost of roads too. Um, I don't know. It's an open question, but how, how do you how do you it feel is, about it? It, it well, we share your concern. Last year, we actually did quite well through it. Um, we did have some material procurement problems um, in certain locations and it's for certain items, but we did quite well 
for our pricing overall. Actually, I think our, our pricing was pretty much in line year over year. Uh, but yeah, we do we do share that concern. It's just a question of um, the, the added problem of putting it off, right? So our, our feeling is more if we can get out early and work with the contractors that we normally work with, we'll, we'll receive favorable pricing. But to come up with these estimates, you're obviously you're extremely talented and have been doing this for a long time. It's, I mean, it's best guess. Do you feel more confident, less confident than past years? It just, you know, I don't know. It's a, uh, it's it's a tough question. But. In, in uh, for some of them, the uh, like the 246 for the garage roof, that's a bitted number. So that's a, that's a that's a hard number, right? The uh, the 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 roof itself, we increased the the Irwin barn, we increased a little bit year over year, take up a little bit of that, um, you know, float so to speak. The carriage barn, that's a bid number, right? Uh, the town hall annex is an estimate, and the potting shed is an estimate. But when uh, when I went back to the uh, when I went back to the consultant, the architect about that pricing, and asked him, okay, based upon what you're seeing and what we're asking you to do, what do you think the number would be? Uh, he was in line with where we were. So that was a good feeling. Um, you know, if I, this was just the, the, the envelope in the, in the floor, but if you add on the, the bathrooms at 50 plus a heating system, you get up into the 230 range and that's exactly where he was at, was 233, 35. Okay. So it, that, that he did give me a little bit of comfort. How, how about roads? I mean, if, if, do we just do fewer you know, fewer miles if things start to get much more expensive. I mean, how, how do we, and I know it was on the past slide, but just no, that's, that's, a big, okay. that's a bigger unknown number. I'm just curious. Right. The, the no, that's a great question. What we, we have a, we have a program whereby we try to touch each road every five years, right? right. So crack sealed five years, 10 years out, crack sealed micro thin overlay yep. or Cape seal. We have another application that we're doing now that we just started was called a fog seal, which comes in at about five years, which is a rejuvenator. And it stops oxidation. So we might be able to see as we start to utilize that 10 year number increase to an 11, 12, which give us some savings. Um, but yes, you're correct. What we would do in that point is uh, shift from one treatment to another, elevate one road, drop another one, um, just to make sure, but also make sure that it doesn't, um, uh, in essence, fall off the curve, right? So right. what we don't want to have happen is it falls down to a, a more costly repair. So we'll take right. you care lose, of it. You lose the road, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, right. I don't want to, I don't want to go to a point where I've got to change the technique and now I've increased the cost. So it's a, it is a balancing act um, uh, year over year, but we've, we've been able to pretty much stay on track. You know, we've had to drop a road or add a road Every year we've had to do that two or three up or down, but uh, we've, we've been able to stay on track throughout this entire time. But if, but if worse came to worse, you could you'd come back for a special appropriation, I guess. I don't know. We just, could, yeah. We, do, we you know. I, I, I know there's some cringing on that, but I mean, one there's of cringing all the time. I don't, I don't like to come back and ask for more money. Yeah. I, I, you yeah. know, no, yeah. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Todd, we good? Is everybody okay? <laughs> I think we're good. Just looking through. I think everybody's asked their questions. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So the highway department, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, $605,000. Um, it's up from 383, but in essence, this is, uh, we have uh, the sweeper coming into play. So we have a, we have a couple of sweepers and we try to space out their, um, um, when we actually replace them. So this one's coming online this year. We have $220,000 for a two wheel drive dump sander. This is our standard. Um, it's about a 15 year a lifespan. This one's lasted a little bit longer. This is the last truck with a sander body on it. Um, all the new trucks have what's called an all season body. This is dedicated strictly to plowing and, and uh, salting our roads. Um, since the sander body's on it, you can't do anything else with it. So we're happy to get rid of this last one out of our fleet. Um, and then when you go to the all season body, it can be used 365 since uh, what happens is you basically uh, turn over an area in the bed and uh, sander goes away. You don't see it, the salter goes away and you're able to utilize it. So this is a, a nice thing that we'll be able to get rid of this last piece in our fleet. Uh, we have $190,000 for sweeper. Uh, <clears throat> We have two, the sweepers last seven, 10 years maximum. Um, 
and uh, they eat each other alive or they eat themselves alive as they go out on the, on the road. And um, as their maintenance costs increase, we look to then replace both of them. Or one of them is past its useful life. One is approaching it. And uh, it's time to replace. We're just determining which one is the better one to save. Um, we have a new item in our, our, um, in our fleet, so to speak. We have a processing screener. For a number of years now, we've been renting a screener or utilizing a contractor screener for work that we could do. Um, and this is in essence, everything that all the materials that we generate, soil, rock, um, asphalt, what have you, uh, comes in, we put it through the screener and then it processes out the dirt. The, um, the asphalt will go one place, the rock will go another. We can then um, offload the rock to a contractor who has a crusher, get materials back in kind. Uh, and then make our own material, um, and then in essence save uh, monies on disposal costs or reuse costs. Um, it's a necessary aspect of, of the work. The, the screener that we have been utilizing from um, a contractor for a number of years is past its useful life, and uh, we feel it's necessary to um, have one of our own. It's been sitting in our five-year plan at the three-year mark for a decade or more. And we then last year I brought it forward one, and this year I brought it forward one more. So um, knowing that that um, it, it's a necessary aspect, it it'll save us. It's a twenty year lifespan, five thousand dollars a year, easy on just material storage and handling. Um, we have twenty thousand dollars for loader plow. I have twenty five thousand dollars for our, our equipment refurbishing. That's a standard um, in our in our capital as far as trying to refurbish the the equipment that we have and get as much useful life out of it as we possibly can. And then this year I have a salt barn. Um, it's not necessarily a feasibility study, but it's, it's, it's in essence um, looking at our entire site and finding out exactly where a salt barn should be planned or should be installed. Uh, the salt area that we have, as you're aware, it's inside an existing or an old incinerator building. We can't dump salt into it. Um, it has to be dumped on the outside and brought in. Can't load the trucks from the inside, have to load the trucks from the outside. We're about the only town in the state that has something like this. Um, and uh, its capacity is limited. Um, we started, most specifically started a panic somewhere around last week as we knew storms were coming in and uh, our salt was starting to get low. Everyone was asking for salt from Gateway and uh, from that's the terminal itself. And um, we were waiting for deliveries and they weren't coming. We, we stayed open late. We came in on a Saturday, tried to accommodate as much as possible and we couldn't get the deliveries that were needed until we contacted the president of the company. And then lo and behold, we started getting deliveries, but we got um, dangerously low to the point where we don't wanna to get to that point. We wanna have uh, ample capacity we don't, we're not allowed ample capacity at this, at the area that we're in, the location we're in. Um, and eventually we're gonna have to look at what we're gonna do with the incinerator buildings themselves. This is sort of a necessary first step to uh, get our, basically our, our, our premier um, operations out of it and look to uh, place it elsewhere on the site. So it's a, it's a study to move forward. And this is another item that's been sitting in the five-year capital plan for ever. Since I think we, we took over the facility 20 years ago, I think we've had it in the five-year capital plan and it's just sat there. But uh, I believe it's necessary to start moving forward with this with this idea. So that's that's the $2,000. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, um, Tucker, yeah, sure. I, I think this, this is long overdue. I mean, I remember these discussions for years and years. Would you share what you think the total, um, the total bonding or the total uh, cost of this will be once we decide where to put it and how to do it? Because it's there's a number of options. This is really broad. One of the reasons why we're having this study is I know, them. but so still, our, let's our can we look at place. the total the total um, indebtedness. The, the, the facility itself would be approximately a million to a million and a quarter to, to install uh, a proper size salt dome or salt barn itself is uh, a million to a million and a quarter. Um, the 
the study itself is basically to help us place it on our site. We have a lot of constraints there, given the fact that it, you know, the incinerators are there, the wastewater plant is there, we have a capped landfill, we have an active transfer station. Um, so we need we need some help and guidance and to try to exactly where, where we should be looking and focusing our attention and moving forward from there. Does that answer your question, Judy? Sorry, you're muted. You're still muted, Judy. Just this thing. All right. Um, how about from the state? Any help whatsoever in any limited period of time if we were to complete this? Not at present, but it is no. uh, right. It, it is right for other granting opportunities, a steep grant, things of that nature we could look into. Good. Um, so subsequent, subsequent to the study um, would be the thought to then say, look for funding sources. Um, with the steep grant being one of them now that they've resurrected that, uh, that possibility. All right, thank you. Thank you. Todd, any other questions on highway? I don't see any, I'm good. Excellent. Uh, the transfer station, very easy, uh, $33,000. Um, we'd like to have phase two of our security gates. These are the lower gates, the gates down below to uh, then quadrant off our entire facility um, from use or, or um, access. And then we have $8,000 for a variable message sign. The transfer station is utilizing the first variable message sign that we ever purchased uh, 15 years ago or so. Um, they use it pretty much daily to uh, let residents know when they're open and other happenings at the, at the station itself. Uh, it's necessary to let them know about openings and closings and then uh, what's happening there. Um, and the screens themselves used to have three screens. It's down to one screen and the screens inside. You, you can't necessarily keep, put the message down that you want because not all the bulbs work. Um, the screen doesn't work anymore. So we'd like to replace it um, with a new variable message sign and have it permanently installed um, as you enter and look at the facility. It'll be the first thing that you see coming in. So that's it for the transfer station. Uh, park maintenance, parks equipment. Sean's overall request is $333,000. We have $55,000 for replacement of a pickup truck. Um, <coughs> excuse me, it's a 2011 vehicle. Um, it's right at the end of its useful life. It's been plowing Waveney since its inception, since, uh, since its purchase. We have $145,000 for replacement loader. This replaces the 2005 loader that the Parks Department adopted from the Highway Department when the Highway Department got a new loader a number of years ago. We traded in the Parks Department's old loader since it was older. Um, but now, 15, 17 years old, 7,600 hours. When you pass by 7,000 hours on a vehicle or a piece of equipment like this, it's, it's time to, uh, um, to have it replaced. And given the fact that we've, you know, it, it's a, it's a hand-me-down already, um, it's necessary. It was utilized, it's utilized almost daily and it was a necessary adjunct during every single storm event that we've had so, so far to date. Um, yes, $69,000 to replace a, a out front mower, a 10 foot mower, uh, $21,000 for two separate blowers. There's one uh, turbine unit and then one stand uh, unit. And then he has $23,000 for a cedar aerator. This, um, is an add to our fleet, so to speak, but this cedar aerator, <clears throat> um, our other ones, you actually have to go out, mark out every single irrigation head in the line before you go out and aerate. This, you don't have to, so there's no, there's um, this one will actually not damage any of the irrigation heads that we have and is a huge cost savings in time and effort to try to then, if you can imagine, go out and mark out an entire, you know, field or Saks field, say, so to speak, with all the irrigation heads, then go forward and then aerate and seed it um, versus just being able to go out and take care of the work itself. And then we have $20,000 for the replacement of two uh, zero turn mowers that are past their useful life. We like to replace one usually annually, but we have two coming due um, at this time due to a prior purchase. So we have two that we'd like to replace. Any questions on parks equipment? Tiger, when you say that the vehicle 
has been here since the inception, since well, the it's been plowing Waveney since since its purchase. Since we purchased the vehicle, not yeah. since we purchased Waveney. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You, I meant you, I you we're, never, we're never sure with you because you keep these things around <laughs> so long. So I want to just clarify. It wasn't since no, no, nineteen sixty. It was okay. Just, right. That was a misstep. I apologize. I misspoke. Um. So the next is Parks Fields. Uh, we have $60,000. This is an annual expenditure for field improvements. This is for uh, lips on baseball fields, wear marks on uh, soccer fields, things of that nature. We have $150,000 for irrigation upgrades. Um, if you remember over the years, we've been trying to keep this number low and, be, and avoid the replacement situation whereby we have to go in and replace an entire system. Uh, the system at Mead Park had, uh, let's say, at least six breaks over the past year um, that had to be repaired and fixed. That system needs to be replaced every single time that that went down. Um, the irrigation system or the, the, we weren't able to water the clay courts either. So it was all one entire system. So all the water in that entire area was affected. Um, so we're this system is beyond its useful life and, and unfortunately we need to replace it. We have $50,000 for fences and backstops. This is an annual expenditure. Uh, we have $12,000 for water fountain replacement. Um, we're trying to change over to bottle fillers so that you get rid of the, uh, um, the fountain itself. Um, that's a kind of a change due to COVID, so to speak. We have $7,000 for maintenance at Dunning. Um, now with the changeover to the NCAF, <clears throat> excuse me, maintenance at Dunning has actually come onto the Parks Department side. So we have money um, in there for anything from bleacher and masonry repairs to fencing repairs, things of that nature. This was originally um, handled on the, on the other side of the coin on the BOE side by Jay Egan. And now with, with the advent of the, of the NCAF, uh, these expenditures are coming to us. Um, we have $50,000 for another phase of the exterior wall repair for Waveney. Um, and then we have uh, phase two for the Bristow Bird Sanctuary and some monies for the NCAF. This is a earmark for the NCAF at $300,000. Um, we're waiting for them to finalize their master plan and come forward with what they'd like to do for their next project. And this is our, uh, the town's contribution or our side of it. Um, I have a couple of things just to show you as far as the success at Bristow. Um, so this is the master plan itself that was developed. We went through year one of the, of, uh, the master plan, phase one, and uh, we were able to take the green link all the way through and repair it, uh, and then install a new bridge, dredge the pond, line the pond um, with a with some rocks and uh, line the streams that are coming in and then put in a nice viewing area with benches. And that's your overall view there. This is a nice senior friendly area. The trail is senior friendly. We've had people come in now off of 106 and be able to walk in. Um, and I highly recommend it. I took a 15 minute walk there about, I don't know, two weeks ago. It was quite lovely, really nice. I saw six people in my 15 minute time frame there. I walked in, walked out, saw six separate people. Um, and it was eight o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday. Um, so it is highly utilized. Uh, we are looking for the next phase for the $112,000 to redo some of the existing trails in and around um, the main Green Link Trail. And then uh, some other work, some fencing work and some other um, necessary upgrades, some boardwalk work. There's some boardwalks that are in disrepair that go through the wetlands area. So it's, it's phase two moving forward. I believe Chris Shipper's on the line if you have any questions about Bristow and, and the plans going forward. The Friends of Bristow Park have been excellent. He's uh, already raised $65,000 um, towards some of the work. He's, they've given us a check for $35,000. It's sitting on the town side in our special projects account that we draw monies for uh, out of to uh, for some of the amenities that are going on or some of the study and studies and work that are being done. So I don't know, Chris, do you have anything you want to add for a minute or so? Yeah, Chris, it would be great so, to get your thoughts, yeah. 
Well, I, first, I, I want to say that uh, Tiger and his team have done a great job in phase one. I think we, we brought phase one in ahead of plan and under budget, and that's allowed us to pick up some additional work. Our, our thinking is that, you know, over the five years, we're trying to get this accomplished in time for the park's 100th anniversary, um, that we'll be able to bring down the total spend from the estimated 509 to somewhere in the low, low 400s, uh, partly through contributions, but also uh, uh, when you have a good plan and you have a good bid package, you get some real benefits. Um, in that first round, uh, we had three bids that averaged 150, but the best bid was 100. So we had a big gain in that process. And that's, um, and we believe that that'll continue uh, in terms of the quality of what we're getting. And um, I'm, I'm very happy and I feel like the town is doing its part on the hardscape and the friends of Bristow are kicking in on all the softscape. Um, I just got uh, someone to contribute to install or reinstall a fernery or a fern garden. Um, I have another, uh, uh, there's another group that's come in and said, we'd like to install more um, bird housing and bird signage and bird education information. So uh, for a park that can become, you know, uh, for New Canaan, something unique, it's one of the oldest uh, sanctuaries in the nation. Uh, it'll be a demonstration site for good bird management and for good native plant management. That's great. I appreciate that. Any questions on? Yeah, I just, um, uh, Todd, it's Tom. So I was just wondering if you could remind uh, the board just um, what was the total project cost of the master plan and how much was going to be raised by the private contributions and how much were we agreeing to fund on the town side? I can, I can try and speak to that. Yeah, that would be good. So the entire uh, master plan rolled up to just over uh, something like 610,000. What, uh, uh, what the discussion was, was that of that 100,000, there were some soft items, plantings, uh, bird facilities, bird housing, and things like that. It was rolled back down to about 500,000 uh, for what we call hardscape, you know, paths, ponds, parking, um, uh, trailways, bridges, things like that. And, you know, our thinking is that eventually that'll come down to about 400,000 through a combination of good bid management, good process management, and additional contributions. So um, we're, I know the Friends of Bristow have reached out and said, we may wanna take up the so-called pavilion plan, which is a 30, $33,000 investment in year three. So there are examples where it's coming in, but um, uh, so I, I would guess that for uh, every two dollars that the town puts in, the uh, Friends of Bristol will kick in a dollar or something like that. It'll be a two to one ratio. Hey, Chris, was that um, was that laid out for us that level of detail last year when we looked at it? I'm just trying to put everything in place and look. It's it's beautiful. No one's questioning that, but I'm just. I kind of remember more that it was going to be, what did we do last year? Was it, yeah. was it 200 it was last year? 199.5, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say, say 200, right? And, <laughs> and, and, and I was thinking it was 200 and that there was going to be, I, I had a sense there was going to be a bigger, you were talking about the ability to raise money and that there was going to be less of a town direct expense on this. And, and I, I have to, I probably have to go back to last year, but I don't recall the whole number being that big in well, terms of what the town would be. I, I just, I don't recall. And Tom, maybe you do. I don't know. No, the, the, Tom, the whole number was, you know, the five-year plan was $509,000, which was, which was carved out of the 620,000 or so uh, total estimate. Um, I, it is an interesting, I mean, you raise a good point. This is a, a park that's uh, almost 100 years old, and I, I think we'd be hard pressed to go back in our records and find any maintenance spending on it in that time frame. Um, I, feel, I feel pretty confident that uh, the Friends of Bristow are, are putting in money. They're in for 65000 already um, on this project. And that is, you know, and that's covering soft costs, like they paid for the whole master plan development. Um, they're paying for the pollinator pathway that'll go through there. They're going to contribute for a fernery. These are, you know, if you have the basic canvas, then the Friends of Bristow will decorate that canvas, I think is one way to look at it. 
It we had, yeah, we had the last year when we put it forward, we had the five year plan laid out and it was 5095 was the entire allotment all the way across the board. It was 199.5 followed by 112, followed by 100,000, followed by 82, then 15. And the 15 at the end is fence repair, which is uh, an inevitable situation since it's ringed with fences all the way around. Um, but at that time we did detail out the entire plan for five years. <laughs> and it's all, all the, the, the plantings and stuff, is, is that going to require maintenance um, from the park staff or is that going to be the friends? Do you envision the friends keeping up? I mean, because these are pretty specialized sure. uh, areas right. and they're cool. But they right. so, so you're going to have things like uh, a fernery. That's that's a pretty good uh, uh, project. Ferns are not high maintenance. Right. Um, uh, you know, the pollinator pathway will be a mixture of trees, shrubs, and plants, and they should settle in, and there will be some maintenance, and I think the Friends of Bristol will look after that. Um, on the bird houses, it's going to be volunteers who are going to take care of that, and the bird feeder program is already done by volunteers. Um, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, in the park maintenance, that's a lot of volunteer work, and I think the Conservation Commission itself has put in hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars uh, to making this somewhat special. And it has, it gets a lot of visitation now. And I mean, it's right there in town. You know, so just if I can go back. So the thinking was, is all in, we were at a number perhaps just above six. The town was committing five. You were looking to raise a hundred plus you're 50 to 60% of the way there for your private donation fundraising at the end of year one. Is that about right? Do I know? Yeah, and I, and I think that the revised thinking is that the, the Friends of Bristol are gonna contribute close to 200 in this project. And that the town's piece of it, which is mostly hardscape trails, raised boardwalks that, that have to be replaced, fence lines and what have you, that the town will contribute that. So I think the net spend will be of, of the 600,000, it'll be a 400, 200 split. And you get a nice park for it. Right, and so far we've had, we've had very good success with our bidding um, whereby, as Chris mentioned, the, the first phase was actually well below what the original estimate was. So we were actually able to then bring something from a secondary phase forward and dredge the pond and still be under what the original estimate was for the trail work for the original first phase. Um, so we are, we are seeing a benefit. We were seeing a benefit at the time and we're hoping that trend continues. So you'd see that 600 number actually reduced down further. Hey, Tiger, can you go back to the, um, to the uh, capital items? <clears throat> yes. We started with, I had a couple questions on that page. Was there anything else on Bristow, Chris? Or any, or, uh, we're good? Okay, thank you, thank you. So I had two questions. One, the Waveney Park Playground you skipped. I skipped it for a reason, yeah. I went at the end, so that's why I wanted to talk, you know, let Chris talk and then we could talk about this one because it's an easy one. Okay, you want to do that now and yeah. then I'll ask another question. Absolutely, you can just put a line through it. The, um, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the thought being is that if we don't bring something forward and put it in year one, right, you don't necessarily see it, right? We don't talk about it. If it sits in year two, we don't talk about it. So um, this is for what we had monies in was for the resurfacing of the adult fitness area. And then looking at it holistically, we said, well, we don't have a children's playground in Waveney. We should be looking at that. So that was brought forward by the, by the commission. Um, so at the time we looked at it at that point, got it, uh, a number from, a from an installer and that's the number here, but I would like to take it back out, go back to the commission, say to the commission, okay, fine. Let's find a location. Let's sit down on it, figure out where we want to go. Is this the proper location for it? Is it better served being down by the pool? Is it better served someplace else? Is it better served not in Waveney? And then, uh, at that point in time, come back forward. Okay. If I, didn't, okay. if I don't have it in year one, I can't even, you know, okay. we don't spend much time on it. You know, I do like the fact that if I take it off, my, when I get to my last slide, I will actually be in the negative. So I'm, I'm <laughs> very happy to get there. So I got like three slides left and then I get there and I get to be real happy. 
And then, okay, good. And then the other question was on the NCAF future projects. That That's not specific enough. I'm not sure what you're looking it's, for. Right. It's Well, I had a marker in there last year, starting this year at $300,000 a year for, for four years out for $1.2 million. The NCAF has been very active in trying to put forward their master plan, develop their master plan and come forward from there. Um, still waiting for a, a, a decision on that. So I, it's, it's, it was brought forward thinking that within the next 18 months, the NCAF would probably be coming forward with another phase of their, of their plans. But it, is, it does not have a specific, it is not tied to a specific project. It's tied to a project um, as a town's contribution to the NCAF. But it's not, it's not tied to anything at, at present. Can I, maybe it's me, but I, I think it's time for just an update on the NCAF. How did it work? MOU was in place. What did we do? What didn't we do? So um, I did ask tonight. I did ask Mike Benavento to be on the line. I don't know. Yeah, not tonight. We don't have time okay. tonight, and, and I fine. and I don't I don't know what all the questions might be. So I don't want to wing it here. It's not on no, the agenda. Fine. Let's let's um, just put that off for the for um, a, another time. I'll I'll have I'll work with let's work with Tucker and get it on a, on an agenda maybe in March. Excellent. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey Tucker, just really quickly with Dunning. Stadium, yeah. the seven grand. Um, just I, look, I know Johnny needs work. That's not the bleachers and stuff because those were falling apart. No, What's it's it's stuff? basically it's capital. It's it's maintenance repair that's of a capital nature, right? So we have monies inside on our operating budget, okay, to uh, maintain Dunning. Um, that's on the that's on the operating side, either um, in our outside contractors or um, in some of our. Uh, supplies items to take care of Dunning itself uh, on an operational basis. This was more on a, on a capital side. If we need to do s certain repairs and things of that nature, it yeah. was more of a capital nature. Um, I know it's a small number and you could theoretically throw it over into the other side and call it a day, but you know, they were in essence separate. And it also then brings it forward to say, okay, we're taking care of Dunning now because this number eventually will increase, right? There'll be some other larger capital items that mm -hmm. will need to be taken care of. Um, okay. Okay. I, must, oh, I just got a question. Go ahead, Mike. Oops, sorry. I, I missed it, but I'm just wondering um, what the budget is that you put in for the uh, converting the tennis court to pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. Mike, that's a great question. The uh, and I thank you very much. We um, we did not put the I, I did not put the transfer form in yet. What we're looking to do is we have existing capital monies in the Mead Park tennis court upgrade uh, for $140,000. Last year, we asked for that monies to be split, basically in essence, half and half, okay? Half to pickle, half to the courts themselves. When we brought contractors out to take a look at the pickleball courts, by that time, the asphalt underneath was, <clears throat> no longer serviceable. There's a tree line that sits behind uh, along the railroad tracks and uh, the tree roots had gotten underneath the asphalt and lifted it and popped it. So the asphalt couldn't, we couldn't take off the top surface, the painted surface and then build a pickleball court on top of it. That was our original thought. So the thought is now we've got to go in and take out the entire court and put in, uh, in essence, what we did at the high school, which was uh, uh, <clears throat> a pre-stressed pre concrete slab over the entire thing, inclusive of the um, the playback wall. So you'll have that entire area. Right now, there are two different grades. We would continue to put them at one grade or bring them into one grade at that point in time. You'd have a continual playing surface for five separate pickle courts and still have that playback wall if you wanted to play tennis against that playback wall. What we need to do in order to do that is to actually carry the monies over all into pickle not have any money in the Hartshoe courts, and then next year revisit the Hartshoe courts. I put it into next year's budget to revisit the re, uh, um, reconstruction of the Hartshoe courts itself. But given the fact that Pickle is exploding um, throughout the country, as, as you mentioned prior, um, and I know in my town, we uh, they got lucky, I'll be perfectly honest with you, they, they had uh, three tennis courts that they planned to resurface to put in Pickle, and they did it right before COVID hit. And up until the snow fell, that the pickle was full. 
with people ringing the outside of the fence waiting to play and tennis was empty. At least that's in my town, all right? So- Well, is that, is that fair for you? Well, no, I live in Cheshire. I, I, live, I live outside the, uh, the circle. The, um, so, but in essence, we found, uh, you know, that was anecdotal evidence to me that pickles exploding and we're, uh, we're on the right track. I just didn't put the transfer form together for you. you you'll see that in a, in a subsequent meeting um, to uh, make that transfer. And then we can go forward with that project and then revisit it. You don't need any thing. additional capital notes. You already have the budget from last year. I have right? the budget, right. I'm just carrying it over. Yeah. In essence. Right. Um, and then once we, once we do that transfer, then I can go out to bid and, and uh, hopefully construct in the spring. Um, Great. Thank yeah. you, Tiger. No, thank you. Uh, any other questions on uh, Parks Capital, Todd? I think I think we're good. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> this is included in the town buildings request, but just so everyone, you know, we, we kind of always kept the nature center separate just so you don't understand what's going on. Uh, we have two furnace replacements um, slated, one at the education annex and one at the animal care building. Uh, for $26,000 and $20,000 a piece. Both of them are 20 plus years old and, excuse me, are in need of replacement. Um, but that this was included in those those 13 items that I said were in the facility, dude. This is part of it. I just separated them out just so you could see them. And then lastly, we get to the wastewater plant. <clears throat> um, last year's request was 878. Um, Victor, to your answer, that, was, that included the $200,000 for the I and I study, the inflow and infiltration study. Um, this year, what we have is we're continuing. It's li listed in here as the zinc study, but as I mentioned about our, our um, permitting success, we still would like to keep the engineer on record to then continue forward with maintenance of the plant. And, and uh, the new permit does require some additional studies to be performed. So this money is, will go towards that. And then we have various monies. Again, I talked about the sewer rehab, $10,000 for that. We have one of our major maintenance areas uh, or items, um, the clarifier drive replacement and rehab. We have two clarifiers. Um, they're the big round tanks that you see. Um, and this is for the guts of the tank, the skimmer and the things in the middle for $80,000. We've done very well in the fact that the plant is 22 years old. And this is the first time that we're actually having to replace that. And then, as I mentioned before, $66,000 for the Main Street sewer rehab, that area of Main Street that'll get uh, redone um, after Eversource and Aquarian go in. And the rest are just basic, you know, replacement parts um, in and around the facility that are, that are necessary um, from some of, the, some of the items that are coming offline. Uh, <clears throat> this year we're proposing a $300,000 lift from the sewer reserve. Last year was 800,000 from the fund itself, uh, just in keep, so it kind of keeps where our normal capital request is always in the low kind of $30,000, 10 to $30,000 range. Um, and that's it. I don't know if you have any other questions um, before I get to my final slide, so to speak. Um, I'll get to it and say uh, right now, our, right now as it stands without the changes that we had just spoken about, we were at 1.79 for our operating and 0.96 for our capital for 1.4 overall. But if I take, uh, I don't take into account the potting shed, but I just removed the, uh, the uh, playground area. That drops us, um, our capital down to a minus 3.595% request. And our overall goes down to a minus 0.747%. So we're down just under a percentage, just under a percentage point year over year. And if you add your extra buy? Uh, I didn't add my extra guy. I got to do it. We'll have to go do all that math again. <laughs> I think, you know, it'll pretty much be a wash at that point in time, right? Yeah, a lot of uh, puts and takes there today, tonight. I mean, there was yes, the yeah. wave any yeah. park is out and this was up and this was down and changed so forth. So I, I just want to make sure we get the right final numbers. Um, the trees were a little bit higher, right? Uh, yes, 20,000. So things like that. Let's just make sure we get all that uh, ticked and tied. I know Linda's on and just but you, you and he just make sure you compare notes. We will be circling back tomorrow morning, first thing. Other questions for Tiger? Tiger, do you have anything else? No, you've been excellent. Thank you very much. 
Uh, it was always a great job and a lot of hard work. And by the way, the comment about the um, the vehicle since inception was a compliment to you because you're the one who keeps them going for so long. So that's why. That's, was- that's to my guys and our, 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 our mechanics. They do a fantastic job. So, but thank you very much for your support. Any other questions? Thank you. You can we take this presentation just down for just a second, yeah. Tiger, so we can see if anybody has their hand up. Okay, yeah, good. Linda, anything from your perspective or Kevin? No, thank you. I did um, neglect to introduce, we have Joshua Kaufman um, on the line. He is a um, finance analyst. He helps me put together some of this, um, some of the charts and the graphs and whatnot. And he's been on the call and he's been a member of the finance team since February, March, I believe he started. And then six weeks we shut down for COVID. Um, but he's been, Unrelated. he's been a, He's been a trooper <laughs> and related, yes. Uh, but he is on the call and um, I just wanted to introduce him to you. Thank you. Thanks for your help, Josh. Of course, my pleasure. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Thursday, uh, we'll, Thursday, we'll um, yeah. your fire police and OEM and then mm-hmm. um, go into an executive session to talk about security. Yep, okay. Then remember Tuesday, the following Tuesday, we have the public hearing. Thursday, Tucker, you just walk us through the public hearing, not now, but on Thursday, just make sure we understand how we're going to do that and, and people can ask questions about the budget. And, so forth. Um, and then on the following Thursday, the 4th of March, we obviously uh, will put on this and send it over to the town council. Okay. Hey, Todd, I, was, I was just gonna note, uh, I'm not sure we mentioned this last year, but you know, across the, across the uh, Sound at Oyster Bay, there's a Teddy Roosevelt uh, bird sanctuary that's being renovated for two and a half million dollars. It's 15 acres versus Bristol, 17 acres. And Bristol's a real gem in our, in our downtown. I think uh, excellent for the town to invest $400,000. Um, yeah. Yeah. To restore a hundred year old property is, is I good think value. I think that's right. No, that's and, and a success. Um, Linda, I did have a question for you. Sorry. Um, is the family fourth in our budget? Family fourth is uh, paid by donations, so we don't um, budget so for it. To wash, to wash with the yes. passes. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we're, I, I hope we're all planning on it. Let me put it that way. I know the, I think the first one, <laughs> we'll see what happens, but obviously we can't control everything. But, um, okay, good. Any other questions? Oh, you want to talk about revenues? Do you, anything on revenues? I think we, we ought to make sure we've got a view of the um, all the public works revenues. We, we didn't really cover that. You asked that question in the very beginning. It's okay if we don't have it prepared now, but maybe it's something we can do flash on Thursday, um, Linda. Sounds good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll be there Friday. We'll be there Thursday for you. Yeah, so. okay, perfect. Yep, thanks, Tiger. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. If, if there's nothing else, I'm scanning the crowd here. I'll just ask for a motion to, uh, to adjourn. Judy, mm-hmm. second. Tom Schulte, okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. None? Thank you all very Aye. much. Really good meeting. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you Thursday. Thanks, Ben. Good night. Good night.